Shalom, shalom, Israel, most high in Christ, bless, happy Sabbath, can you hear me? I've got nothing here. Princess Odess, Base Reeves, Ariel, Pamela, Tahila, Savannah, Omar, Hadassah, Aliza, Israel, Barbara B., Allison Henderson, Lydia, James, Sharon, Eliza, Paulette, Good, Black Diamond, Labette, Labrador, as Israel, Janina, Facebook, Aaron Parker, Tamiko Sanchez, Christina, Avila, Abia, Israel, Sean Lott, Tamiko Sanchez, Rita, Patricia Wooden, Quell Israel, Sabuda Mahalil, Miguel Galvez, Akhir, Layar, Esther Ruth, Lee's mom, Low, Duchess Denise Dance, uh, Briella Israel, Mendel Rocker, Righteousness is Immortal, Tia Shalom, So High 808, Zedekiah, Judah, Israel, Devante, Ephraim, Israel, Shemet Ba, Israel, Paya, Israel, Sean, Patsy, Yard Gal. Serafina Israel, Derek Mead, Nikki Israel, Sabira Israel, Perez Malone, Angela Marie, Serafina Israel, Most High in Christ Bless, Happy Sabbath and Shalom. So, um, look, it's winding down. We're approaching the Passover, so... I didn't want to hit y'all next week with it because then y'all have short time to prepare. So it's Monday the 8th at sundown. So y'all got, y'all have very little time to prepare as it is now. That's why I figure let's go over it now because I know people are going to ask questions next week and then the following week we'll be doing Passover. So whatever y'all don't get right tonight, y'all got till next week to ask me again. Whatever y'all don't get right tonight, y'all got till next week to ask me again. And then that's it, because it's the 8th. April 8th, Monday at sundown. What are your thoughts on the eclipse on the same day? That's rare. A lot of people are afraid for the eclipse that's coming. Uh, Usually bad things happen around Passover time, so I don't know what to expect. I'm not going to speculate, and I'm not going to make things up. Uh, People are making up a lot of stupid things online. Um, But to me, the eclipse is a big deal. I just moved, so my house already clean. All praise is Sean. Can you explain Exodus 21, 3 and 4? Uh, these date. Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 3. If he came in by himself, he read should... The, read the first verse. Verse 1. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve. And in the seventh he shall go out free for meaning, nothing. Meaning, meaning, you cannot keep them to serve you forever. Okay? And this is not slavery. Some people, if they fell on hard times, they could sell their services. So there was laws that designate how long you could work for someone. Read on. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he because 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 you may take him in by himself, 
and then based on you providing housing, shelter, food, and raiment, he's now able to bring in other people. Okay, that's based on your provisions. So if he came by himself, he leaves by himself. Read on. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. Right, because he married her. You can't keep his wife from him. What verse we at? That was the end of verse 3. Read 4. They said 3 and 4. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Right, because the, uh, he made provisions for him. He didn't do it on his own. Okay, so that's all that it's saying there is whatever. Back then, when we had, we were self-sufficient. Like I keep telling y'all before, there was no Walmarts, there was no Amazon, there was no job center, there was no programs to go and get work. We were self-sufficient. There was no place to go and fill out applications. So we pretty much relied on each other. Okay, some people will fall on hard times. Some people can do it by themselves. So you would sell your services to someone who had the accommodations for you. And uh, provisions were made for you. And at the same time, you had to respect the house that was taking you in and making these provisions. And you're not going to use them and just leave. Okay, so it was a different time. People like to bring that up from back then, and you have to uh, picture what was going on at that time. That just came out of Egypt, and Moses was giving them uh, rules concerning how these relationships should work as we grow as a people. Okay? We didn't just come out and we had everything. There was no grocery stores. There wasn't no laundromats. There wasn't no... uh, All the stuff that you see now that took hundreds of years to acquire and to make. Okay, so people literally had to work with their hands, establish themselves, and whoever couldn't keep up, they would sell their services. Meaning you could work for them. They give you room, shelter, food, raiment, and as your life evolved, that person you was living made provisions for you. You couldn't just abandon them and leave. So that's why these things were put in place. Apostle, could you let me know where in the scripture speaks about putting someone out of the body for time for them to repent and change their spirit? Uh, Give me... Second Thessalonians chapter three. Verse thirteen. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter three and verse thirteen. But ye brethren, be not weary in well doing. Because sometimes in this truth you start to fall off, you start to get tired. You become weary in well doing. Read on. And if any man obey not our word, you don't go by the instructions given. Read on. By this epistle, note that man. Point them out. Let everybody know that this person was not uh, following the instructions. Read on. And have no company with him. And what? And have no company you with him. You put him out of the body. Read on. That he may be ashamed. So that he'll miss the presence of the. Uh, being a- amongst his p- his brothers, his family, read on. Yet count him not as an enemy. You don't deal with him as an enemy, read on. But admonish him. The admonishing is while you're out of the body, you let them know. You got to get yourself together. That's the admonishment, read on. But admonish him as a brother. They're still a brother. So this is where we get that someone breaks the rules, they got to leave. It says, mark that man and have no company with him. This is not the Christian church where you could do whatever you want and then just sit there and be like, okay, 
and you just stay in your sin. The scriptures say to mark that man and have no company with him. Okay? Don't make him your enemy. Don't treat him like the enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Meaning families, they argue, y'all don't speak, then y'all make up. Okay? Uh, what else we got? Tom, I see the eclipse is the same day as the start of the Passover. Is there something about this in the Bible? A, a, an eclipse happened when Christ was persecuted on the Passover. And it tells you that there was darkness, so an eclipse did happen. Is there significance for now? I don't know. So we're not making anything up. Oh. Uh, watching a lot of biblical smoke and my favorite part is when you pop in randomly and start giving smoke all praises i'm glad um some people don't like that anthony some people get upset how uh, i read in the comments and they're like uh they feel like i'm there just to make trouble and that's not the case i'm usually there when trouble starts not to make trouble Ah, uh, Shalom Deacon, the sun is not down yet, but I put dishes in the dishwasher to be done before. It's supposed to be done, everything is supposed to be complete at sundown. You could put it before, just uh, stop doing what you're doing before sundown. Slide that down for a minute, I'll miss something. Oh. Uh, the Sabbath begin when the sky is completely blue. When the sun goes down, if there's light in the sky, it still hasn't started. Once the sun is down, it's sundown. It's from evening to evening, sundown to sundown. The same way when we say the Sabbath is over, we check to see if there's still sunlight. If there's still sunlight, then the Sabbath hasn't concluded. When we can no longer see the Sabbath, the sun, it's over. So even here, we check. We don't go by the clock. We look. Hey, brothers, is it still daylight out? No, okay, the Sabbath is over. So it's from sundown to sundown. Uh, slide that back up. No, you went too far, too far up. Thank you, Deacon. My stepfather said it's evil to peep people out the church for sin because we're all sinners. Your stepfather's wicked. Okay, it's all in the Bible. Even when you read with Miriam, when she was going against Moses, they said, put her out the camp seven days. That's new. Your, your stepfather don't read the Bible. He don't know nothing about the Bible. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. I got a lot. I just gave you all that one there. But there's a lot. Well, the Most High was always put them out the camp, put them out the camp, put them out the camp. You read in the Old Testament, you hear about it all the time. I just showed you in the New Testament because people will switch it to, oh, well, we're under Christ now. No, this, what I read to you was under Christ, okay? Have no company with that man. In 2 Thessalonians, Christ was dead in God, but those are the rules of the church. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, read that. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Somebody start saying that they don't believe, and we get a lot of that. They start switching things around, okay? You're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with them. Read on. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? They're going against the laws that are put in place. Read on. And what communion hath light with darkness? You're in the light of God and Christ, and they're in darkness. So it says not to be unequally yoked with them. As soon as somebody starts saying, well, I disagree with this, and I disagree with that, brother, go home, watch out, take the watch at home package. Okay? Take the watch at home package, because you can't harm nobody in the body, 
from your TV set, so go watch at home. And then when you get your mind right, then you could come back to us. Okay, um, righteousness is immortal. That is for my PayPal. There. I can't see it with the banner. Move the banner. I, so, to just pull the banner down for until we go through the chat because I can't see it's cutting off too much. I didn't even see it pop up. No, it's ASAP1 at Hotmail.com. Okay, so um, I'm sorry. I don't see the person that asked for the PayPal. Yes, that's it there for the PayPal. It's asap1 at hotmail.com. What day do we prepare our lamb for the pe- feast? Uh, in the scriptures, it tell you to get it on the 10th day. Okay, so if you can get it for the 10th day and you got preservations in your fridge to do it, do it. Can you give the sense of Sirach 6 and 3? The sad thing is my stepfather's a pastor of a congregation. Well, I feel sorry for your congregation. It's nothing but sin going on there if your stepfather's going to tell you that foolishness. He don't know nothing about the Bible. He don't read. All it shows is he don't read the Bible. Read it. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 3. Thou shalt eat up thy leaves, and loose thy fruit, and leave thyself as a dry tree. He's making a comparison to us. The Lord always referred to us as plants. Read verse, the verse before. Verse 2. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Meaning you are doing your own thing. You're not getting any... Uh, Guidance when making your decisions. You're extolling yourself in the counsel of your own heart, your own mind. Read on. That thy soul be not torn in pieces. And then you're going to destroy yourself. Read on. As a bull straying along. As a bull straying along. Read on. Thou shalt eat up thy leaves. Your leaves are supposed to be what sustains you. Read on. And loose thy fruit. And destroy your fruits. Your fruits are your doings. Read on. And leave thyself as a dry tree. And then you'll be dried up, a tree of no profit. Because the Lord says, uh, I've made thee a noble vine. How art thou become a degenerate plant? I'm paraphrasing it. That's all it's going into. Uh, allegory of us being uh, plants that are not fit for anything. Slide down, slide down. Slowly. Uh, is it okay for a single sister to be around married and single men in the school at 12 in the morning by herself if she's doing the work. I don't know what's going on in the school. I can only speak for this school. I don't know why those conditions. I don't know what's going on there. It may be necessary. So I can't say in another school if it's okay or if it's not okay. I don't know what the supervision is. I don't know why the sister's there. I don't know what's going on in the school. So I can't answer that. 
I can't speak on a scenario in which I'm not present because whatever answer I give, they'll be, well, no, we were over here. The lighting was there. There were two people there. There was security there. There was cameras there. I can't answer something like that if I'm not there. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I apologize if you answered this many times before tonight, but CMOS, there's nothing wrong with CMOS. Uh, and you have to tell me why something is wrong with it, you people that keep saying that. Uh, as you can kill. Yo, is this guy such a loser? How can you come week after week and nobody wants to hit? Tyrone, r- remember, um, sister, sister, go home, Roger. <laughs> you got to tell him, go home, Tyrone. Get out of here, man. He comes typing all, all caps. Go home, man. There is God. Just go home. Go sit somewhere. Slide down a little bit. I'm going to have to get the sisters to do a town sound bite for me. I tell your ass, just go home, man. Nobody don't want to hear what you have to say, you loser. If it's not Clubhouse, it's here. How could you be such a loser? Who is Damn. Slide down. <laughs> He's just, he's like us, he like, he's like, he's, he's just what I named him, a roach. You come out at the worst time. When company's over, you, you thought you killed all the roaches, but he decided to come out when company's dead. Just go home, man. Nobody don't want to hear from you. Gosh. Especially now that we know how stupid you are. When we allowed you to speak on Clubhouse and every single scripture you pulled, you, you butchered. <laughs> <Got he. laughs> now that we know how stupid you are, just watch our line, bro, and don't type. He needs some milk. Slide down. <laughs> Gosh. You know it's him. He always start typing in all caps like he's begging for attention. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I'm sorry, where we at? What's good for anxiety? The scriptures. And I don't know what's bringing on your anxiety, so I cannot prescribe uh, anything. For me, the scriptures. But I need to know what's bringing on your anxiety. Uh Do we put out our alcohol for Passover? If it has leaven in it, because there's alcohol with leaven in it, slide down a little bit. Oh. Slide up. What was Paul talking about in 1 Corinthians 4 and 4? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judged me is the Lord. Okay, meaning we have to answer to the Lord. Read on. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Don't put your personal judgment on things. Certain things we can't see right now that the Lord is going to make manifest. This, we don't have the ability to judge every single thing. We can only judge what's before us. Some things are going to have to wait till Christ come and decide who's right and who's wrong. That was it. And we'll make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And the count, whatever's going on in your heart that you're trying to hide, when the Lord gets here, he's going to make it manifest. Because there's people around us that's not right, and they do a good job of hiding it. But when Christ gets hit, you're not going to be able to hide nothing. And that's, that, what verse you in? 
at the very end of verse 5. Read on. And then shall every man have praise of God. Then you'll have praise of God if you did the right thing. That was that was the end of the verse. We won't keep going. Okay. That's it. They said 4 to 5 and we read it. Uh... I currently live with my father temporarily. He's Muslim. It's tough at times. I try to stay focused. Any advice for a woman that's trying to live righteously? Stay out your Muslim father's business while you're under his roof, you know, and you still keep the Lord's commandments, but just don't disrupt your living situation. Don't start uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Read that, please. The book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Because a lot of times we're trying to give uh, our pearls and our holiness to people who spirit as dogs and swine. Okay? If I'm in somebody, I got a uh, Muslim where I work, he st- I respect his space, he respects mine. I don't start trying to bring the Bible to him. He literally goes and he gets his prayer cloth and he goes on the floor and he does his prayer through the day and people get nervous. Only one time I told him, bro, you shouldn't be doing that. There's people who feel uncomfortable with what you're doing. Okay, he didn't listen and they sh- shipped him someplace else. I told him from one co-worker to another, but as far as me caring about him praying, I didn't care because I knew he was praying to a rock. But am I going to tell him that? No, he's going to be in his feelings. So just be mindful of what you say to your dad while you're under his roof. Read on. Lest they trample them under their feet. Because they're going to trample under their feet spiritually your beliefs. Read on. And turn again and rend you. And then they're going to attack you. So just be mindful while you're in the house of an unbeliever. Uh, I know we will reign with Christ for a thousand years when he will destroy all the other nations. Or every nation is going to bow down. Uh, what if I live with relative under them and they don't want me to take all the leaven? That's not your house. Don't touch the stuff. If it's not your house, don't touch the people's stuff that you live with. You can't tell them what Deacon Asaph said. They're going to be like, nigga, go live with Deacon Asaph. <laughs> Why are you here? If you're in somebody's house, respect their house and don't cross the boundaries. Of what they do, and I got nothing to do with you. Uh, it's a law for the heat of food in the microwave during the Sabbath, or am I supposed to keep the food room temperature? And you're not supposed to be heating anything. All food preparation should have been from the day before. After the sun goes down for 24 hours, uh, don't use any devices to heat up food. If you want your food to stay good, we're going to repeat this over and over so nobody don't bring my name up again. If you want your food to stay hot, get a thermos, or you can get something to put it in, okay? But uh, no electric devices that keeps heat going, okay? Wrap it in something, put it in Tupperware, get a thermos, you know? Just remind me every week to say that. So that if someone brings up my name again after six years, seven years, I'll already have it recorded. Uh, Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? What about baby milk bottle? Uh, Room temperature. You think the milk was coming out the mom's breast assist? The mom was taking it. And, and 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 heating it up? No, it was room temperature milk from the breasts. Uh, you got that from the white man to heat the milk up. That's not biblical. The mothers didn't squeeze the, the breast milk out of the breasts and drop it in a pot and they heat it up. You got that from the white man. Slide that down. Slide that down. Oh, you got that. Go back up slowly. Uh, what about baby milk? Shalom Deacon first here in the truth. How do I prepare? Well, I'm going to go into that, Samuel. 
I'm just taking a few questions before we go into strictly Passover. Are we IUIC members? Can we gamble? It depends what you consider gambling. It's, there's no scripture that says you can Lottery is gambling. A scratch-off ticket is gambling. I don't have a scripture to forbid that. It's what you do with the money that becomes an issue. Uh, how did the disciples know who was or wasn't an Israelite? By speaking to them, how they dress. The Israelites had their beard. They had fringes on their garments. How we greet each other. I, like, for instance, me. Uh, I never, I'll never forget. My boss was like, how come some people, when you talk, you say shalom? Then other people, you say hi. People who are not in the faith, I don't say shalom to. But you know right away I'm speaking to another Israelite because when I greet them, I say shalom. Okay? People who are not in the faith, or I don't say that to them. Uh, slide that down. Oh. If someone is kicked out of IUIC, we still keep the past. Yes. You don't stop. IUIC is not whether you follow God or not. If you're not with IUIC, you're commanded to do these things. If you're only doing it because of IUIC, then you're fake. You are literally fake if you're only doing it. If you leave us, you're still supposed to keep Passover, still supposed to keep the Sabbath, still supposed to keep Day of Atonement, still supposed to keep Feast of Dedication, still supposed to have, you're still doing it. You do this stuff until the Messiah returns. Not just because, we, IUIC didn't write the Bible. The stuff we're telling you is instruction that God, see every household is supposed to be doing this. Slide down, slide down. Uh, I never understood making the trek to Mecca and kissing the rock. I don't know. It's just no different from Christian Christian church, banging tambourines and telling you this is your season. Uh, slide up, slide up. Shalom, Deacon, how do I endure 40 days? I don't, I don't, where did that go to? How do I endure 40 days of uncleanliness? Ask another woman. I can't answer. I don't know what you mean by endure. Are you thinking about uh, intimacy? A lot of hugs and kisses. Because <laughs> you can't do it. So you just, you're not, you're supposed to refrain from that. So I know the desire will come. It's, it's a, 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 a common question, but the bottom line is just you got to be patient. That's why uh, when Christ set up his ministry, the men were called disciples, root word discipline. So you got to use discipline. A lot of people don't wait the 40 days. This is new to them. And they'd be like, look, I want to do it. So you got to understand that uh, your Compliance is to fight the urge and uh, understand that you're going to be judged by the most high if you give in. Now, I've heard, uh, I don't know why she retracted the statement. I've heard cases of, it's not the woman, it's the man pushing up like, yo, let me get some, let me get some. You got to bring the scriptures to him and tell him, look, God says no. It's not me. I would love to go, but God says no. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, y'all, that's something that y'all got to um, discuss. And I don't know. I don't know why you retracted your statement. It's not. It's a common question. So, slide down, slide down, slide down. Hey, let me show y'all something. Because I know why the statement was retracted. But watch this. Go to Sirach. Sirach chapter 20, because some of y'all type stuff, then y'all be like, 
I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete it. This is what the Bible says about you embarrassed folk. Sirach chapter 20, verse 22. The book of Sirach chapter 20 and verse 22. There is that destroyed his own soul. You destroy your own self because you're ashamed. Okay? If you have a platform where you can ask questions, ask the questions. Don't be bashful. Read on. And by accepting a person. Meaning you do what that person wants you to do instead of what the Bible says for you to do. Read on. Overthrow it himself. You destroy your own self. So that's why I gave the scenario. You know how many women tell me, yo, my husband don't want to wait. He's forcing me. He's this. And I got to be like, yo, let him know that he got to wait because God says so. Okay? He got the devil on him. How hard is it going to be for him to be like, yo... I want to follow what the scriptures say so that blessings come to my house. He got to be able to control his urge. So um, a lot of times that's what's going on. Most of the time the woman is very, I'm not saying that it's not possible. You are a woman thinking, you know, I want to engage. But you got to be able to control that desire. So as I said before, read it one more time. Sirach chapter 20, verse 22. There is that destroyeth his own soul. You are going to get your own self killed. Read on. Through bashfulness. Just because you're ashamed. Just because you don't want to speak up. And you're stupid as hell if that's the case. Read on. And by accepting a person. Because you don't want to ask the right, right questions and get the answers biblically. Read on. Overthroweth himself. You destroy your own self. God ain't going to listen to, oh, well. It's my husband, and, and he kept forcing me. It didn't work for Ananias and Sapphira. He killed her husband first. Now he questioned the husband, se the wife separate, and then he said, the same people that carried your husband out, they're going to carry your black ass out. Goodbye. So you women, like I said, some of you, that's the way you are. You just listen to whatever evil your husband tells you. Slide down, slide down, slide down. Slide down. Oh. Side down. Uh, so I'm Deacon, what do you do if everyone around you says the Sabbath is every day and call you an extreme cultist? You tell them that they're dumbasses. How could the Sabbath, give me Exodus chapter 35, verse 2. Y'all you, you, keep talking to people who don't read the Bible. So they tell you stupid shit and y'all believe it. You tell them you're a dumbass. The, the Sabbath cannot be every day. Because there's rules that, there's guidelines and rules for the Sabbath. And this is what it says. Read it. The book of Exodus, chapter 35 and verse 2. Six days shall work be done. You got six days to do your work. Read on. But on the seventh day, there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest. How could you Lord. rest every single day? How are you going to pay your bills? That's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. You're, you're talking to an idiot that doesn't read the Bible. And shame on you for listening to them. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about you who are in a place of learning, and you let an idiot tell you something like that. Read it again. Six days shall work be done. You have six days to work. Pay your bills. Clean your house. Get your affairs in order. Read on. But on the seventh day. But when that seventh day comes, read on. There shall be to you a holy day. A Sabbath of rest to How the Lord. How could you rest every single day? You know who rests every single day? A bum. A bum with no life. So how could the Sabbath be every single day you wake up, you do no work, you just rest? Read on. Whosoever doth work therein shall be put to death. Because it was strict, stringent rules that govern the Sabbath. So how could you be productive in society if every single day you observe as a Sabbath? That's the most dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay? And shame on you for someone telling you that, and you can't take the scripture in the beginning of the Bible to show them you're, an, you're a complete idiot. Slide down. Well, well, before I say that, I keep forgetting sometimes there's new people here. Okay, how many of you are new? This is your first night here. Type N for new. If you've been here before, don't type nothing. Just type a N, the letter N for new. If you've been here before, don't type nothing. So this is where I know to ease up. 
or to go hard. Okay, we got one. Only in London, Copper Queen, 12 Finds Peace. Damn, y'all making me feel bad now. I didn't know it was so much new people. What do we got, seven? I'll only feel bad if we reach ten. We only got seven, so I don't feel bad. One, two, three, four, five. Slide down. How long does it take to just get your keyboard and put N? <laughs> I'm not the bad guy. It was only seven people. If it's like 10 or 12 or 15, then I got to ease up. But it's only seven, so. Y'all remember how I used to be in the beginning? I think I've calmed down. I've improved a lot. I think I've adjusted. I think I've been, it's been a kinder, warmer, more gentler Deacon Asaph. Okay, so to the seven new people, just be patient with me. It's called Friday Night Raw for because I answer the questions raw and uncut. I come on late at this hour. We hope the children are asleep so we can have grown-up talk. And the questions that you wanted to know that you couldn't ask your priest, your minister, your pastor, your preacher, you can ask here. So just please be bear with me. Okay? Uh, so to some of you who are new, this may come as a shock to you to hear the Bible brought out this way. Okay, slide back down so I could get those questions again. It was, it's only seven. Welcome, seven. Slide down, slide down. And if and to the new people, if you hear me, cussing out a guy named... Tyrochius, he's an annoying person that follows us around. So um, that's the only reason why I address him. Don't take it personal. He's a nut job, and he just comes to disrupt the class. Uh, slide down, slide down some more. Slide down some more. I'm trying to pick up where I left off. I don't want people saying that I skipped over. Adesinia says, wait for what? Whenever a woman gives birth to a man-child, she has to wait 40 days before having sexual relations. 80 for a female. And they don't teach you that in the world, but in the Bible, that's the law. You cannot just go and have sex as soon as you have a baby. Your body is still open. Uh, your body's not the same. So God designate a waiting period before you go back and have sexual relations. Okay, 40 days for a male child, 80 days for a female. And a lot of times, couples, they don't want to wait. So that's why I made the statements I made. Slide down some more. Uh, will there be a school in Chattanooga? Contact the local Tennessee school, and they could tell you. I don't know what the status is of the people that's there. Slide down. Oh. Shalom Deacon, can you please tell me the scripture that proves Jesus wore pants? I think I heard the teacher. It tells you that uh, the first time the pants were implemented were here. Give me oh gosh. In the Bible they're not called pants. They're called breaches. Exodus chapter twenty eight. Verse 40. This is when a dress code was made for you to enter the temple, for the males to enter the temple 
there was a dress code, and this is where it was given. The book of Exodus, chapter 28, and verse 40. And for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with him, and shalt anoint them, and consecrate and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me the priest's office. Thou shalt make them linen breeches. Those are pants. Before they had long robes, God said, no, from now on, I want you to have this under your garments. Read on. To cover their nakedness. To cover your nakedness. He don't want your thing swinging, blowing in the wind. Read on. From the loins. From the loins. Even. From, read on. Even unto the thigh. Down past your thigh. Okay, eventually we called them pants, but the first time they were implemented, this is here. It's, it's linen breeches. Read on. Even unto the thighs they shall reach, and they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons when they come in unto the tabernacle of the congregation. So the Lord didn't want you swinging in the wind when you came in there. When you came into the congregation, you're supposed to have your nakedness covered. Even though you had the coat, you put pants under. Uh, slide down, slide down, slide down. Slide down some more, some more, some more, some more, some more. More. More, I'll tell you when. Deacon is eating at Hooters Unlawful. I wouldn't go to a place where big breasted women are there serving my food. I'm exploiting them. And I know why I'm there, if I'm there as a man, is to look at breastuses. So, yes, me as a repenting Israelite, I would not be in that restaurant. Slide down. Uh, okay, now I'm where I am. Go up slowly. Uh, what do we do if people around us constantly trying to get us to eat pork? You shouldn't be around people constantly eating pork. We just read that. Okay? Have uh, no company with them. They're in sin. If they're around, you still trying to get you to eat. Can you picture that? Hey, Deacon, you want some pork? You want some pork? After a while, they're going to get that work. They're going to get in bed. They don't respect me if they constantly keep offering me pork. So the problem is not them. It is you. It's not them, it's you. Why are you around people that are constantly forcing you to break the dietary law? That should be the question. Slide down. Uh, what, do you, what do I say when someone says, prove that you are an Israelite? I don't have to prove nothing to them. I cannot prove to anybody I'm an Israelite. Okay? I can't prove it. I haven't been in a school in two years, and I haven't stopped celebrating. I'm in the process of getting back in. All praises, Baptist Black. Uh, do women need to separate from the congregation when they're on their menstrual cycle? No. There's no scripture that says that. Uh, slide down. Just keep sliding down. Why do you call Yehoshua HaMashiach by his generic name? Jesus Christ is a strange God, and white people gave us that name, even using the name the Lord God. This is what I don't understand about you black Hebrew Israelites. Y'all arguing about us saying Jesus Christ, and the world is afraid of us. They're not afraid of you saying Yahashua Hamashiach. They're not worried about you. You're not on the Southern Poverty Law Center list. You not, ADL is not following you around. They're not worried about what you're saying. They're worried about what we're saying. So until you're in a position where people are looking at you and questioning your movement, talk to me. You ain't telling me nothing now. They're worried about the purple is a problem, not the people that are saying what you're saying. And it's always, if it's not you, it's why you're not saying Yahweh Shai? Why you're not saying Yeshua? It's always some black Hebrew Israelite coming with some new name that they made up and telling us why we're not saying that. 
And the people that's telling us to say the name, nobody knows who you are or cares what you're saying. So don't ask us why we're successful with what we're teaching and we're pushing the fact that there's a black messiah that's going to set the world on fire. And you arguing us about the name. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Now, to how you shut me up? Make the world known to the name that you want there. When I see a leader doing interviews, when I see a leader traveling to Africa, to Europe, to Italy, then you can holler at me. But until then, nobody don't know what you're talking about. Stay in your lane. Slide up. Are we allowed to are we all are we to allow on the fence people to partake in Passover in our home? Adonika, you're gonna have to rewrite that. I I don't understand that. Slide up. Uh, is it okay to gamble for entertainment? I personally don't gamble, but I didn't know any script. I don't know what you mean. If when I play the lottery, it's not for entertainment. Like, for instance, what is it now? Almost touching a billion? So if I buy a ticket, that's not for entertainment. It's to get piss aid. <laughs> I am trying to get broke off. That's right. <laughs> it's not for entertainment. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what you mean by for entertainment. I, I don't throw my money away for entertainment. I don't go, like, to the, I guess you're meaning the casino. I'm not going to the casino. The odds are against me. If I know what I'm doing, I'll go there. And I, if, if I can manipulate the system or I understand the system where I'm going to walk out with my money, but I'm not going to no casino and throwing my money away. If you're trying to paraphrase it in a way where I just want to go and throw away some funds in the casino. So just bear with me on that one. Uh, go up a little bit. What do you do if someone around you say the Sabbath? We already explained that. Uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but does the days after birthdays include the... Well, you're right, Kamala, because someone will say, look, we're not doing no vaginal. Okay, what about oral? It's still uh, intimacy, sexual contact. And you got to understand the, the, the forbearance is for the woman to become whole again. Okay, so if you're still doing that and it's, it's, you're, you're violating the time period that the Most High wants you to refresh yourself. So it's not funny. You got a lot of people that won't ask the question and they'll be doing that. Okay, you don't know how much emails I get of people saying, look, my husband wants me to do this to me. Should I still do it? At least the woman got enough sense to ask instead of the dumb woman, okay, and she just do it and be in sin. That's why I told you not to be. Read it again. Sirach chapter, what was it? 20 verse 22. This is your soul you're dealing with. This is not, this is not something I made up. I'm telling you it in the word of God. Book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 22. There is that destroyed his own soul. You will destroy your own soul because you're bashful. Your life is on the line. Read on. And by accepting a person. And because you accept that other person's wickedness, sinfulness, disregard for God's commandments. Read on. Overthrow with himself. You overthrow your own self. So as I said before, this concerns your soul, your life. If you care about yourself, you ask questions and you let your partner know, look, I don't want to do this because I don't love you. I don't want to do it because God says not to. If he's still pushing you, then he a nigger. And y'all know I don't like niggers, so I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, where we at? Where we at? So if that's not, that's not funny. You said I don't want to be funny. That's not funny. That's I, I'm telling you, you're going to destroy your own soul if you think, I, I got one more for you. I forgot. This one also. Uh, give me. Uh, what's that word that they use when you assume something? There is God. Oh, I got it. 
Give me Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 12. Because look, she typed that. Well, what if we're not doing regular sex? We're doing mouth, right? You're doing oral. Watch what Moses says. Deuteronomy 17, verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, and verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously. You know what presumptuously means? You don't ask no questions. You just say, well, you know, we're not doing it in the vagina. So I presume that the mouth is okay. Read it again. And the man that will do presumptuously. Meaning you didn't ask no questions. You just presumed something was okay. Let's see if God lets you off the hook. Read on. And will not hearken unto the priest. You didn't go and speak to the priest and ask them, is it okay to do this? Read on. That standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God. Because those priests are in direct communication with God. Speaking God's word to the people, and you dismiss them, and you presume, read on. Or unto the judge. Or you didn't go to a judge and ask questions, read on. Even that man shall die. No, God is going to be like, she didn't know. Even that man shall die. God is going to say, she was embarrassed. Even that man shall die. Just leave her alone. It's just a little sucky sucky. Even, What's the problem? Even that man shall die. Die. So I'm showing you, this is not no game here. I know y'all y'all from the Christian church where there's no consequences and Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. That's not what's going on in this Bible. You cannot presume that something is okay. You got to ask questions. Let's do a little bit more. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 42. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, and verse 42. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, nor I am, for I am not among you. If the Israelites asked questions before they went in battle. And God told them, Look, tell these niggas, sit their black asses down. I'm not going up with you. You on your own. Read it again. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight. For I am not among you. Black people start fighting at the drop of a dime. That's why we pack the hospitals, the cemeteries, and the jailhouses. We're ready to fight for anything. And we're not looking. Is there a just cause to start this fight? Read on. Lest you be smitten before your enemies. And God will let you get your ass kicked. Translation of smitten before your enemies, let you get your ass kicked. Read on. So I speak unto you. And you would not hear. He told them, I'm not going to defend you. And they went uh, by themselves. Read on. But, re re but rebelled against the commandments. You rebelled against my commandments. The priest told you, sit your black ass down. But you didn't want to listen. Read on. But rebelled against the commandment of the Lord. And went presumptuously up into the hill. You just assume everything's going to be all right now. Read on. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you and chased you, as bees do. And they beat your ass. Read on. And destroyed you in Sierra. You got your ass whooped. <laughs> okay? So don't assume that you could do things. I got a lot more, but I don't want to. I'll save that for another class. Don't just start thinking, well, maybe this is okay. Ask questions. Slide down, slide down, slide down. Y'all be typing when I'm cracking my jokes. Y'all can't do that. Y'all see me cracking my jokes, don't type. Because now y'all making me go all the way back up to look at all your laughter. Keep going up. Uh, keep going up, keep going up. I'm lost. Will any Christian discover the real truth in the last day? Yes, a lot of Christians are waking up and they're learning. So go up a little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, slide down.
You worried about his name, but not the laws. Yes, I'm glad you said that we are Israelites. A lot of these dudes that think that they got a deep name, they know different from the joke. I was dating a girl before, and she would say, it's not God, it's Jehovah God. She thought just because she was Jehovah's Witness, and she don't say God, she say Jehovah. You people are no different. You black Hebrew Israelites with some exclusive name, and y'all ain't doing a damn thing the Bible says. And y'all trying to tell us who worldwide is spreading the gospel, we need to say the name y'all saying, sit your ass down. Because most of y'all, when we press you and we test you, you ain't doing nothing that the scriptures say to do. But you, all you could do is, well, they're, they're not saying the name we're saying. Sit your ass down. Even the niggas that was running their mouth like that, that they were doing this before we were doing what we doing. There ain't nobody watching them. And they got a bunch of other groups to say the name that they say it. Okay? I don't know if you if you saw last year. The video was 20 years strong. Okay? So we're not listening to y'all. You just some, that's some new name your ass just made up. Sit your ass down. That's my answer to you. Why, I'm, why we don't say what you saying? Who are you? And where is that popular? Where is that being circulated? Where is your congregation with all your people saying it? And all your people repenting? Uh, where we at? That's it. Uh, what about sex while the woman is pregnant? Um, me, I didn't do it. Because, again, every time you have sexual relations with your woman, you make her unclean. And with the things that they want to do, C-section, uh, all the stuff that they're doing to the woman while she has that baby in her, especially a melanated child, you, you want to keep your woman's body, everything, just keep her good so your child could be born. So me, I didn't do it. Once I read in the scriptures that it says every time that I lay with her, I make her unclean. I want my child to come out healthy and strong, you know, so I didn't do it. Do I have a scripture that says not to? I don't. I, I, I can't tell you not to. Uh, do we double the time if we have twins? There's no scripture that says that. What? Uh, so much. That six week thing, that's the white man made that up. The white man made that up. That's not biblical. What I'm telling you is in scriptures. Slide down a little bit. Oh. Right. You got to remember life just came from your vagina. You, they just cut the cord. You're not even fully healed, and you're sticking uh, things back inside of you. You got to look at it spiritually and mentally, okay? It's, it's not like she going anywhere. She just had a baby. So, of course, we want to do it, but I'm thinking about, yo, I want my woman to heal, and I want uh, my baby to, to be healthy and strong. Okay, you got to, that's why the scriptures say we must be born again. Stop being black. That's all black people think about is sex and, and, and pleasure and everything. Sometimes you got to come to a place of spirituality. God gave us these rules for a reason. Okay, and if that's all you're thinking about, your woman just had a baby and that's all you're thinking about, you're not a man of God. You, I, there's so much things you could do with your downtime. I don't have enough time to read the scriptures. Okay, so when I do have time, I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm going. I could let my woman rest for the time that it takes, the 40 days, the 80 days, which is nothing. I'm going to be in the scriptures. I'm going to be reading. By the time I come back to lay with her, I'm going to be like, babe, look at all the studying I did in that time that we weren't engaged. It's just like the boxer that won't have no sex before the fight. The warrior that won't have no sex before the fight. Nigga, you ain't no boxer. You're not no warrior. You black. You're just a black man. Now, all you take care about all day is busting a nut and being up in butt. 
Okay, men of God, they in the scripts. I don't know how much plainer to make it. Uh, slide up, slide up, slide up. Slide up. We covered the oral sex. Oh. Oh. Email it. Email me first. Let me know what's going on, and then we'll take it from there. I would like to ask about the red heifer and to tell you about the documentary called Bobby Wine, the People's President. Watch now is giving Malcolm X for Uganda. Not sure what that is. Slide up. Uh... My question for you, Bishop, is why do you call Elohim? We already answered that. Okay. You're not the first person. This is going to come as a shock to you. But I've been doing this now since 2011, like 13 years. Every new black Hebrew Israelite group come with a different name. Every new. How many times have people come up here telling us it's not that name? Okay, the Israelites in New York, the One West, you're supposed to say Yahweh Shai. Okay, y'all can say it, but don't get mad at us because we're not saying what you want. I can't change the name every time some new group come with a new name. It's Yeshua. It's Yehoshua. It's Yuhei Wavhe. You know how much names I heard? I can't keep track no more. And the people telling me they're not respecting us for the work we putting in, they trying to uh, discredit us and tell us, us we doing something wrong. When everything we doing is working. No, I'm, we're not listening to y'all no more. <clears throat> and if you think we're wrong, then you push the gospel in that name. Ran into an old school one West Israelite that tried to refute Colossians 1.16 about Christ being the firstborn, the creator of all things, while quoting Exodus 4.22. He's an idiot. Okay? Israel being the firstborn and Christ being the firstborn is a nation versus a man. That's two totally different things. You can't correlate the two scriptures. Uh, slide down, slide down. I obey Elohim's laws. Listen, you don't understand where I'm coming from, and that's okay. Elohim understands. Like I said, use the name that you want to use, but I need to see the fruits of your labor. Nobody don't respect what you all saying. They're not worried about you. They're worried about what we saying. Okay? Negroes was deceived with the name Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're the one that's making it respectable and letting you know it's the black messiah that's going to set the world on fire. They're not worried about what you're saying. That's right. And let's go by what you said. If Elohim understands, then you will become the man. Okay, eventually people will be like, yo, this dude is right right here. We'll see you at camp. We'll see you out in the street. We'll see you changing lives, and then you'll be right. Okay, maybe I don't understand you. <clears throat> maybe you are right, okay? But the bottom line is what I'm saying. As far as Christ commanding us, go and find the lost sheep of the house of Israel, we've been doing that. Until I see you doing that with the name that you're doing, sit down respectfully, okay? You are not the first and you will not be the last. And y'all, y'all, we, we're... Doing what the scriptures to say, say to do. Y'all not doing nothing, and we supposed to stop and scratch our heads, and now listen to you. Come on, man. Yeah, that's that. Where, where they do that at? Where they do that at? Uh, will any Christian discover the real truth? We already answered that. Yes. A lot of people have left Christianity, and they're following us. What's the significance of washing the feet? When Christ did it, it was to uh, bring the brothers closer together. 
okay? And remember, the washing of feet during that time is different from now. They weren't walking around with Timberlands and Nikes. They had sandals on. So your feet was always getting dirty. There was always a basin at the door. for. There was customary to do that because you walking around with sandals. Okay, the, the feet washing back then is different from what you're doing now. You were washing it because of the time and the age and the way things were. It's not necessary for us to now, I mean, we could do it. Okay, but you got to understand, the things that were implemented at that time, it was customary all the time to constantly wash your feet. So to have someone else do it in care and in love, that was cool for it to be done. Oh, uh, that. You should not care if we call ourselves Israelites, Tinger, Tinger. And look, I'm not knocking anybody using another name. If y'all want to use another name, use it. But don't get mad at us because we're not saying what you're saying. The people who we engage, they don't know nothing about the name you made up. I don't know the root, the origin of where you got your name from. So I'm not going to turn that into a, a, a discussion with them. When they need to keep the Sabbath, put fringes on, grow their beards, stop eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, uh, Thanksgiving, New Year's, holidays. I'm trying to bring them to repentance. Y'all want to argue about a name. That's why I said sit down. That already show me. Once y'all come across people that's doing that, the most high never ever, you not the first, bro. I've been, I've been doing this since before YouTube. And all the people that's arguing that name, nobody knows them. Okay? No, but they're, or they're local. You're local. Uh, I don't want to be a bachelor, but I want to know if masturbation is a sin or not. Again, do I have a scripture that says not to? No. But when you're masturbating, your, your thoughts as you're pleasuring yourself, it's a thin line between where you're in sin, okay? I don't know what material you're using. A lot of y'all use pornography. Pornography is a sin, okay? You're looking at the nakedness of another woman that's not your wife. And if you're looking at pornography with a man in it, you're borderline homosexual because I don't want to see no penises. Picture you a man of God and you're watching pornography and you're looking at another man's nutsack. And the Bible says not to uncover the man's nakedness. You're borderline homosexual. If we're keeping it real, if we're being honest here, that's for you pornography people. Because if you're watching another woman getting done up, you're not going to take a black marker and color out the area of where the genitals are. <laughs> okay? Let's keep it real. You're not going to imagine that you're not seeing another man's penis in your hey, face. Hey, hey, hey. And you're right. If you're comfortable, what are you? Play it again. Gay, 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 if you're comfortable looking at that, nigga, you gay. In the gay, words of Riley gay, 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 gay. from the Boondocks, nigga, you gay. So, again, I'm not going to encourage. The scriptures say it's better to marry than to burn. If you're looking at pornography, you're burning. So it's better get get somebody, you know. I'm going to tell you the things that are... Uh, are not going to disrupt your salvation. I'm not going to give in to your temptation. I'm going to tell you what's beneficial for your salvation. Is that a T-shirt? Thank you. Slide down a little bit. Slide down a little bit. Uh, slide up. Slowly. Push those purple hearts to the to right on the right. You you just just made the purple hearts disappear. I don't know where I right there. Take the that's right by the knees and push it up slowly. Uh, Passover is on Monday at sundown, the eighth. On that Monday, the eighth at sundown is when Passover begins. Take. Yes, 1981, push them up. Do sisters need to wear head wraps while in captivity? The scriptures say that you are supposed to cover your head. Get 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4.
The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when we're praying or prophesying as I'm doing now, nothing should be on my head. Read on. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonor with her head. So the only time, according to the laws of God, you need to have your head wrapped is in prayer or prophecy. Other than that, there's no law that says your head has to constantly be covered. Take Israel and push them out. Will God judge other camps whose knowledge doesn't go past a certain point? No. The Lord is going to judge you based on what has been imparted unto you. And like I said before, the way I respond like that is because now it's disrespect. It's disrespect now. You seeing what we're doing and you disregard it and say, nigga, why you ain't saying that's the way I'm taking it. Now you telling me why I'm not saying that nigga. Who are you? Who are you now? I'm taking it as disrespect. Y'all know who we are. Who are you? So don't tell me I don't know you. You're correct. I don't know you. You're 100%. That's the only thing you got right. But don't come trying to d dismiss what we doing. Like, nigga, why you ain't saying this name? Real men don't do that. Like I used to say in the streets, respect my gangster. Or you're going to get an answer. Okay? And y'all don't know how to respect. So y'all got to get checked. They, oh, oh, I don't know if they say it now, you youngins. But in the streets, we used to be like, yo, ask about me. Before we even dealt with you, we'd be like, yo, ask about me. You don't know about me. You need to ask about me before you confront me. Even Jay-Z put it in, us, in his song in Cassidy Sample. You can ask about me. You can ask about me. Where he was saying, look, we know. Don't just come sideways. Don't just come any type of way. Ask about me. You come in and telling me some new name that I ain't never heard before, that nobody knows who it is, and you checking me. Ask about me before you do that. Uh, this is a perfect example of what I'm saying. Tyrochi has put... His, he puts his name Tyrone Don't Do Camp Doctrine. What camp, what do you do? Nobody knows who you are. You walked up to our camp smoking black and miles, <clears throat> looking like you just finished digging out the garbage can. He looked like when he walked up, everybody was going to reach in their pocket and give him a dollar. Okay, and he's bragging he don't do camp. It's obvious you don't do camp. Okay. It's obvious. People look at you and they see how you are. We see why no camp will allow. It's not that you don't do camp. Whatever, whoever will allow you in their camp, we got a question. <laughs> Who's your leader? <laughs> you don't. He's announcing he don't do camp doctrine. What camp is going to let you in their camp? That's why you're alone where you need to be, where you can't hurt nobody but yourself. Uh, slide up. How can a person avoid prolonging their trial? I don't understand that at all. How can a person avoid... Your trial is based on how long the Most High wants it to be. So I don't know what you mean. How could you avoid... If you're prolonging it, that means that you're still in sin. You haven't brought forth fruits of repentance, so I'm going to dig into your question. If your trial is being prolonged, if the Most High is doing that, he either has a date that he wants your trial to go on for, or you could be doing something your own self to prolong it. Uh, slide up, slide up. Is it normal to lose everybody in your life when coming into the truth because all my children and my mother all turned their back and my daughter said they miss when I was normal? Christ said your enemies will be there of your own house. So if everybody's your friend in your house and they're in sin, that means you have not repented. If everybody in your family is still cool with you and you saying you're in this truth, you have not repented. Christ told us, 
He that loveth mother or father, son or daughter is not worthy of me. I read that all the time in here. So if your wicked family is still around you, you have not repented. Slide up, slide up, slide up. Jane Johnson said they do not have passport, deacon, or knowledge. I don't even think they got bus fare. Forget about passport. I don't think they got the dollar and two, what is it, what, 275 now in New York? I don't think they got that to get on the bus to take public transportation. Tell them with a passport, especially the way Tarochi has walked up. He don't got money to get on the bus. Uh, Side up. Um. Urban Pathetics are mad at Captain Ben Zion and Battle Axe Radio for talking about Easter. They did a live, live show a couple of hours ago. Oh, they'll get that work. You know what? I'm going to make this week on Clubhouse. We're going to talk about Easter since you said that. Easter will be getting that work on Clubhouse. Y'all going to get rid of your bunny rabbits and your Easter eggs. Uh. We haven't started speaking about the Passover yet. Stay focused. So just stay focused. Uh, are video games unholy? If you're engaging them to the point where you're not keeping God's commandments, yes. Uh, can we use frozen lamb out the freezer for Passover? Well, if you buy it days before, you're going to have to freeze it to preserve it. Okay, remember, we don't have a backyard with lamb walking around so you got to buy it and put it in your fridge just make sure you defrost it and cook it accordingly is it okay to off google times for when sun no i don't i'm not going by what the white man says sundown is i'm going by my eyes why would you google it when you could just step outside and look i don't understand why would you listen to what Google says? And Google is, they're not in your area. They're just giving you blanket for what they call sundown. And I just told y'all, we go by when we can no longer see the light. I don't know. I, I, is it okay? We already answered that. Is it okay to say happy birthday to my wife but not have a big celebration? I ask because there seems to be recognized here as a person's age in the Bible. No, they don't, they, there was no observance of birthdays there. That's a heathenistic practice. And if your wife wants you to say happy birthday to her, she needs to be re-educated on what the scriptures say. It is a sin, that's a day of vanity. Okay, the Israelites never celebrate birthdays. And if your wife needs to feel like you care about her because you say happy birthday, you're, there's weakness in your relationship. Your wife should do more what God say than want things her way. You're really rude. All I did was ask you why you call him by. You know what, Naya Gonzalez, I apologize. Because you got the heat. You got the bunt of all these other black Hebrew Israelites um, telling me to say a different name. So you know what? You're right. I apologize. I apologize. But I just hope that you understand in my explanation, I've been going through this now for a long time, and this is the way we see things now. So I apologize. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you're new here. Maybe you don't know how we do things. We know that Jesus Christ is not his name. We know that this is what was taught to us in the English language. So I, I'm going to be a little bit more patient with you. Okay? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. To show you I'm not just being rude. 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Read it, please. Because let's say we go by your name, and you believe that you have the right name. Revelation 3, verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, and verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. We have to overcome this world to become pillars in the temple of God. What We're spiritual pillars. A pillar is a support system. So for you to make it into the temple of God, you have to overcome so that God could use you in his temple. Read it again. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Read on. And he shall go no more out. Because God kicked us out of his graces, of his presence. So once we've shown that we overcome this world and we become the men and women that God wants us to be, he says you will go no more out. Read on. And I will write upon him the name of my God. That's when we're going to get God's true name. There's people saying they got his name right now. This is in prophecy. This hasn't happened yet. And I will write on him the name of my God. Read on. And the name of the city of my God. Read on. Which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. Watch this. And I will write upon him my new name. So even the name that you think you have, you have to tell me what's this new name that we're going to get. So this is why we're not hung up the way you are hung up. On what name to say, because the Messiah says that when he comes, he's going to do what? Read it again. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So you're going to get a new name. So that's why we're not hung up the way you're hung up. That's a doctrinal issue. Someone told you that, and if I was to press you and show you, Show me where in history they were saying the name that you just told us to say. You will not be able to present it to me. If you can't present it to me, then I'll, I'll start saying the name you want me to say. If you can show me historically the name that you said for me to say, what's the name? Naya. If you can show me the name, show me historically they were using that name, I will say it from this day forward. Because the scriptures tell you, uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11, read it. Isaiah 28, verse 11. Book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. Because you put, you're really rude. All I did was ask why you don't call him by his Hebrew name. Watch this. Read it, please. For with stammering lips. With what? With stammering lips. This is why we don't say his Hebrew name. With stammering lips. Read on. And another tongue. Another what? Another tongue. Another tongue. Read on. Will he speak to this people? God is speaking to us in another tongue. It's a part of our captivity. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. This is why we're not speaking Hebrew now. Someone told you that. And it's not in accordance with what the scriptures say. There are no Israelites walking this earth speaking the ancient Hebrew that we were speaking. You made that up. And if I press you to show me where you got the name from, you will not be able to show it to me. The same way every other group that had a made-up name, they cannot show it being used anywhere in history. Okay? Because God said this. Read it, please. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself. He said, even you, Jeremiah, thou, even thyself. Read on. Shall discontinue from thine heritage. You're going to be cut off from your heritage, which is your Hebrew. Read on. That I gave thee. That I gave you. Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. So when we serve our enemies, they force us to speak another language. When a white man brought us here, you couldn't tell him, nope, I want to keep speaking Hebrew. You obviously didn't watch the movie Roots, where they beat Kunta Kinte and told him, that's not your name no more, nigga. Your name is Toby. You obviously didn't read the Bible, where they changed Joseph's name. You obviously didn't read the Bible, where they changed Daniel's name. You obviously didn't read the Bible, well, in the New Testament, they forced us to speak Greek. And now you're telling me I'm rude because I won't conform to your doctrine that somebody made up and handed to you. That's not fair. It's not fair. Now I'm rude. Because you're telling me something that someone made up and gave you that you can't prove. That's not fair. So I apologize. That's, that's the second one. I, I, I apologize. 
because people do say that I'm rude, and I'm trying not to be rude. I'm just passionate. But there's reasoning by what we do and what we say. Okay? Uh, I know your whole show was a black man. You guys preach against Esau so much that Jesus Christ is a name that Esau gave to our black God. But his name is Elohim, the father of Yehoshua HaMashiach. Like I said, Naya, just give me anywhere in history what you just said we should be able to we should we be able to find it, correct? So just give me a place, a culture, a civilization where that name is widely spread. And you win the argument. You're typing from a place of emotion. Okay? The white man is not worried about uh Side it down, I lost which we should put. The white man is not worried about Yehoshua Hamashiach. They're not worried about that. They're worried about black people teaching that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, is going to set this earth on fire. They're not worried about the That's name. That's right. Okay? So, I understand you're passionate about where you stand, but as I said to you, someone taught you that. You cannot present to me anywhere in history. You cannot give me no historical account of the world saying the name that you just said. And if you could do it, instead of typing your emotions on the screen, I'll change the name tonight. That's to show you what a fair, loving, swell type of guy I am. If you could prove that the name that you wrote, that you disrupted the show for us to say, if you could prove it was used in, in, in circulation and civilization at any time, I will start saying it as of tonight. But if you can't, stop saying I'm rude and get a cheer. Ah, uh, where we at? Where we at? Oh, where we at? Hey, 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 I got one more. I got one more. I got one more for Naya. I got one more for Naya. I haven't dealt with this in a minute. Uh, watch this. Watch this. How are you going to explain this to me? Luke chapter 23. This is when they were persecuting Christ. You needed some explaining for me, my friend. That's how the delivery guy on my job, he, be like, <laughs> he can't read none of his deliveries. <laughs> mister, mister, explain to me this already. <laughs> uh, he always knocking at my window. Luke chapter 23, verse 36. The book of Luke chapter 23 and verse 36. And the soldiers also mocked him. They were mocking Christ. Read on. Coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. So they were making mockery and saying, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. Read on. And a superscription also was written over him. And then they wrote letters. something over Christ. Read on. In letters of Greek. A what? In letters of Greek. They wrote it in Greek. And Latin. They wrote it in Latin. And Hebrew. And they wrote it in Hebrew. So, Naya, stop saying that we have to say it your way. I'm showing you historically they had three different languages where they wrote the name. They wrote it in Greek, they wrote it in Latin, and they wrote it in Hebrew. The reason why we're saying it in English now is because we were forced to speak English. So I showed you historically there was not just one way to write his name. But what happens when we point this stuff out scripturally? They stay in their emotions because it's a doctrine that someone taught to them. Okay. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Thank you, Huntsman, for those knives there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that's not it. I could destroy this all night, but I'm not. I just We haven't touched on it in a while. And some people come passionately. They disregard everything we're doing, and they just focus on that. Makes no sense to me. I don't know why. Uh, when you have a thorn in your flesh and you tried everything to get it under control, I fasted in all, and I still find myself doing it when I'm down in the dumps. So what can I do? You keep trying. That's the only thing you could keep doing. You just never give up. Some of us are going to have that thorn in the flesh until the Messiah returns. Never give up. Ah. Keep going, keep going. Yes, yes, can we please get uh, Linda, please? <laughs> this is a Linda moment. <laughs> this is a Linda because it's real close with Nyla. <laughs> this is a Linda moment. <laughs> This is a Linda moment. Bro, y'all don't got it. Just give me back my chat. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? What does the scripture mean when it says ye are gods? We That's right, we are. Until we brought death into the world, we were as gods. We were immortal. A god doesn't die. So that's why uh, Christ says that uh, he's going to give us everlasting life. Once we get our immortality back, we'll be gods again. Okay? That's why it tells you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, death, where is thy sting? We, also, we are not made to come on this earth, get old, and die. Gods don't age and die. So that's why he's going to give us new bodies. Uh, what's in the name or rose by any other name is still. We uphold God's laws, save the sacrifice Christ made upon our behalf. That's right, Carl Johnson. Uh, why was a Roman soldier surprised that he wasn't surprised but uh, Paul was well learned. He just asked him, do you speak Greek? But he wasn't surprised. Slide down. It wasn't customary for the Jews to be speaking Greek. Only the ones that were Hellenized. Uh, can a married woman use sex toys all with her husband or is it a sin? Well, again, that's something that you and your husband have to work out. And I can't say yes because I don't know what y'all bringing there. I don't know what the toys are. So I can't say yes because there's a, so many, that's just a wide variety or category where I may say yes to something, you guys do it, and then it brings trouble into your marriage. Uh, slide up. If I put hot water in the thermos on Friday, can I pour it over the normal? Yes, you can. As long as the thermos is not electric, it's not plugged in, it's just a regular thermos, it's fine. Uh, slide down a little bit. Slide down a little bit more. Okay, go back up. Slide back up. Slide back up. Uh, slide back up. Uh, I've just been asked recently a question about if God knows the end from the beginning and he is all-knowing and he knows who's going to be given salvation and those that don't. Yes, he, know, he knows everything. If Slide down a little bit. A little bit. If you feel like your local camp is not the best fit for you, can you try a different location? Yeah, uh, you know, just make sure you don't leave that local camp in bad standing. Slide up. Uh, what? 
Why should we keep trying and what should we do? Well, you should keep trying because the minute you give up, you Christ said, He that is not with me is against me. And he that is he that is against me scattereth abroad. Once you turn away from trying, you've given your hands over to the devil. You've given him your soul. Okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Read that, please. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Because all of us are going to die. He said, don't worry about that. Read on. But rather fear him. Which what? Is, but rather fear him. The him is the judge. The most high, rather fear him, read on. Which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. If you don't get things right, there's a worse damnation awaiting you. So the best thing to do is keep trying until you die. And you should be afraid to go before the most high's throne in judgment. And then he destroys not only your body, but your soul in a place where you cannot control. While you're alive, you can control your destiny. But once you die, that's it. If you die giving up, your soul is going to hell. Okay? Uh, God don't send nobody to hell. You choose to go there by giving up. Can I use scented candles on the Sabbath? Yes. Shalom Deacon, is it okay to go to the Sabbath class while on the monthly? Rolande, you have to tell me what scripture says that you can't. Nobody wouldn't be able to please with you only way on. So, will attending a funeral on Saturday break the Sabbath? No, it doesn't mean you broke the Sabbath, but it wasn't customary for the Israelites. The way the world is designed, it may be the only day that you could go. Me, I didn't go on the Sabbath. I went for a viewing the day before. I spoke to the funeral home. I let them tell them, yeah, I want to see my dad the day before. Not only that, but because I didn't want to see everybody else. So, I viewed him in private. Uh, Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37, why does Jesus separate the heart from the mind if the heart is the mind? It's just uh, talk. It's just the way it's phrased. Slide down. Uh, we read all that there. Slide down. Take J.B. McDowell and push him up. Yes, I want to know where it says that on your menstrual you can go and fellowship. Slide down. We got all those there. Y'all moving too fast, so I don't know. It's most of that stuff I read. Take daughter of the most high and push her up. All those questions, I got them. I don't know. I, I almost everything y'all showed I read already. Yes, I didn't know you were going the other way. Uh, her menstrual cycle is like princess. Uh, not physically circumcised, and I don't have two thousand dollars to get. We've done, just save the money and do your best till you get a chance. Slide back up. Y'all strive for the white man's job. You better strive for the most high. That's true because there's no job where you can just come and be like, I'm not working no more. You get fired. Okay, getting fired from the white man is nothing. Get fired from God is everything. It's eternity.
A D C the song you're looking for is called Purple Rain. down a little bit more a little bit more how can I conquer my wandering eyes I work with women in the medical field um, Job said Yes. Psalm chapter 89. I'm sorry. Why did I say as Job? Yes, read that. The book of Job, chapter 30 and verse 12. Upon my right hand rise the youth. Not that one. Come on, I thought y'all had it. It's Job 31, verse 1. Read it. The book of Job, chapter 31 and verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Job made a pact with himself. Read on. Why then should I think upon a maid? And he's thought about why should I be staring at women and lusting for them? Read on. For what portion of God is there from above? How is God going to view me if he's watching me and this? I make this my primary focus? What portion of God is there from above? Read on. And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? What am I going to inherit if every time the Most High looks down on me from on high, I'm staring at booty. Read on. It's not destruction to the wicked. I'm going to be destroyed because that's a wicked mindset to every time your eyes is on booty, brusses, lusting. Read on. And a strange punishment. Strange things will happen to you if God desires that you be in compliance with his laws, but your mind is someplace else. Read on. To the workers of iniquity. Read on. Verse 4. Doth not. 
He see my ways and count all my steps. So for you to feel comfortable all day staring at booty and brussels and woman and lusting, you having fully conformed to the understanding that God is watching you. Verse 5, read on. If I have walked with vanity or if my foot have hasted to deceit, let me be weighed in an even Me balance. Meaning God is going to weigh you and judge you. Read on. That God may know my integrity. And then God is going to say this man has no integrity. Read on. If my step has turned out of the way, and mine heart walked after mine eyes, and if any bolt, if any blot has cleaved to mine hands. Because the blot could be you lusting after this woman. Read on. Then let me sow, and let another eat. Yea, let my off offspring be rooted out meaning people are going to re reap the benefits of your labor and eventually it's going to affect your children so that's why job said in verse one what i made a covenant with mine eyes he thought everything through and he said look i better get myself together read on why then should i think upon a maid because a lot of bad things follow if that's all you think about day and night Read on. I'm sorry, I'm dropped down to verse 8. Read it one more time. Verse 8. Then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. You will not be productive in this earth, and eventually it will affect your children. Read on. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman. Because some of you looking at fake booties right now, BBLs, fake breasts, and it's deception. Fake hair, fake everything. These women walking around, they're fake everything. And they'll deceive you. Read on. Or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. Now because you're staring so much, now you're lusting. Your places you shouldn't be. Read on. Then let my wife grind unto another. Now you're disrupting your own relationship. Your own wife is going to grind to another. Read on. And let others bow down upon her. Somebody is going to take somebody who you love. So this is the key reason for you people who can't control your eyes and you'll say, oh, I work here. There's beautiful women everywhere. You're going to quit every job. You're going to come across somebody. People say, I can't work here. There's too much women here. Okay, what about when you're in the street? What about when you're at Walmart? What about when you're walking down the block? Are you going to, you got to leave the planet Earth. So you need to do what Job said. Make a covenant with your eyes and think about the consequences. Uh, Give me one second. Um, slide down, slide down. Slide down some more. Oh, uh, 
Tied up a little bit. Side down. And again, it is going to come with age. And um, age and experience. If you're young, you don't really know nothing. Once you reach 40, 50, you're still lusting in one after woman, more than likely you're going to die. That's something you should have got out by like your 20s, your 30s, your young. Okay, you shouldn't have that mindset at 40, 50 years old. The Bible speaks about an old adulterer. God says he hates them. Because that's how much your mind is still intertwined with sex at that age. You should be more rooted in not being so excited over stuff like that. To me, that's, you're being robbed of your power. Every time you're looking at a woman to the point where she knows that you're lusting after her. I'm not giving no woman that uh, strength. Is it disrespectful for me to attend Sabbath class if my husband doesn't attend because of the distance it takes to get there? We joined. No, it's smart for you to go even though he can't make it. Just, just Let's just think about that, because I hear that a lot. I'm glad you asked that question. Sister, why are you not here? Oh, because my husband can't go. So because he can't learn, the two of you stay home and don't learn nothing, that's the dumbest thing. If I can't go, and I know my wife could go and learn and be like, honey, look at all the stuff I learned about God. Why would I keep her home because I can't go? Does that make sense anywhere but for some reason, black households do that. In a Christian church, the women go to church by herself to learn about white man Jesus. But in this truth, the husband will be like, oh, look, I can't make it. I can't get Saturday off or whatever. So we're both not going to learn. That is the most dumbest thing I've ever heard. I will be happy. Honey, you go write all the scriptures down. When you come home, we'll discuss it. But why would I tell her to stay home because I can't go? That makes absolutely no sense. So I just want you to think about that. I can't see your name no more. Whoever wrote that on Facebook, sister, just present it that way. All right? That's that's just totally. And, and then you ask if it, the fact that you put is it disrespectful, guess what I'm going to assume? That he said that to me. That's disrespectful if you learn about God and I don't learn. Where's that at? Where's that in the Bible? <laughs> you're disrespecting me because you're getting closer to God, and I need to get closer to God with you. That makes absolutely no sense. I will be happy that my woman could go. Take the kids, babe. Go ahead. Take the kids. I want to hear everything. when you. At least we'll have something to talk about when you come back, right? You, there will be so much for you to discuss, especially the fact that your woman is that eager to learn about God that she's like, babe, I'm going to go. It's two hours. I'm going to go. I know you can't make it when I come back. I'm going to write all the notes down and I'm going to tell you everything. So if he's telling you it's disrespectful, it's more than likely he's a nigga. <laughs> yes, yes. That sounds like a nigga talking. That sounds like a, 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 an emotional Negro. No, you're disrespecting me. If you go and learn about God, you could go to the club, you could go hang out with your girlfriends, you could go to your mama house, but don't dare go to the church and learn about God. Oh, no. Makes no sense. Uh, I'm 56 and I'm good. I ain't running after nothing but my spiritual situation. Did I just coin a T-shirt? Yes, you did. That's good. I'm 56. I'm good. And I ain't running after nothing but my spiritual situation. That's good. That should be a message to the hoes. 
that walk around with no clothes. That's right. <laughs> okay? That's on the back of your shirt. You did the front, I did the back. We're doing dual T-shirts tonight. <laughs> But I hear that a lot. Sister, why you ain't, especially in the clubhouse. I want to go, but my husband won't let me. He'll let you go to your mama house. he let you go to Keisha house next door where they watching Tyler Perry. They doing everything against God. He don't got no problem with that. But to learn about God, oh, no, oh, no, you're going to disrespect me now. Where do they do that out? They do that in black people's homes. Makes absolutely no sense. Uh, where can I go to get circumcised? Do I UIC have any doctors? No, I went to my local hospital. Um, I don't know of anybody that could do it. And in this day and age, I just want to be in a medical environment if someone's going to handle my (laughs) wee-wee. Okay. I don't just want anyone. I want someone for credit papers and witnesses there. To handle my wee wee, I'm, I'm, I just you know, I, it's just too much no homo stuff going around. So just you know, I want someone I could sue afterwards. You know, I, I, I <laughs> just it's just I don't know. Uh, may I ask how far in distance the school is from you all? That's Gabriella Amor. Where do you live, Gabriella? And then I can let you know if there's a school in your area. Facebook got questions, so watch Facebook so we don't miss them. Uh, and what woman listened to that? No ma- Yes, uh, the most high daughter. There's a lot of silly black women. Now, when I ask them why you're not in the school, they tell you my man won't let me go. He said, if I can't go, you can't go. When did you ever hear those rules in a white man Jesus church? Never. The black woman packed white man Jesus church. So that's why I said only a nigga would tell his wife not to go where the truth of God is being taught. Uh, and that's the only time I ever heard that. When I went to church, there was a lot of black women there without their husband. A lot of black, praise the Lord, catching the Holy Ghost, they wig all over the place. They pulling their skirt down, they throwing blankets over them. There's never no husbands with them. But now in this truth, the, all of a sudden a black woman's confused. I, I, I can't go. My, my husband won't let me go. Come on, man. That don't make no damn sense. Oh, Naya's back. She said, Jesus' name in Hebrew was Yeshua, which translates to English as Joshua. So how do we get the name Jesus? I told you. It was given to us when we were forced to speak English. Okay? That's where it came from. That's how we say it in English. I'm not telling you that you're wrong if you want to say that, but the name that you gave, Naya, you need to show it to me where in history were people saying that. Okay, that's what you need to show me. I was just asking Martha, she says distance is why her husband doesn't attend. So I was asking because I used to drive two hours and know and know those who drive two hours to get to class. Let me tell y'all something. When I first met the bishop, I didn't have no car. I had to take public transportation. Any of you who know how New York City is, to ride from the Bronx to Brooklyn to the last stop, Coney Island, it was two hours on change. Okay? Two hours in change. Snow, rain, uh, drunks in the subway. Oh, everything you could think of. Okay? So I don't listen to people when they say it's too far. It's too far. Oh, my God, it's too far. And we did that for years. I didn't have a car when I first met him. I was taking the subway. Okay, twice a week. We will meet him on the Sabbath, and we will meet him in the middle of the week to study. And there was other people that used to come with their baby carriage, their kids, everything. He started the church in his house. Oh, so where we be? 
Can you explain Jeremiah 9, 25? What about voodoo churches y'all got in Jamaica and Haiti? Hopefully God destroys them. As IUIC, I have a camp in Australia. How do people in Australia sign up? There are people from Australia online watching. Uh, there really are. Um, I, I'm glad y'all put that WW3 because I don't want to make it look like I'm picking on her. I want you people to answer her because she said I was rude. Okay, so I'm glad y'all are picking up that no matter what we say, is that, remember, you got black Hebrew Israelites that insist you must say Yahweh Shai. And they do the same thing she's doing. They're looking for every reasoning for you to conform to the name that they say. Okay, just like the other woman that attacked me, Andrea Diaz. That's how it started. She kept saying, why do you keep saying Jesus Christ? And then when I asked her, present to me what church do you go to and what they're teaching. Someone put that doctrine in Naya's head. That's why I keep asking her, I'll shut up real quick if you can show me where your leader is, where you got that name from, where it's being taught. And notice that has not been presented yet. Tell me the church that you go to. Tell me the city where it is. Show me where you got the name from. And she's doing everything but responding to my question. Got that in Jeremiah, Deacon? I forgot, bro. Y'all took so long to get it. Man, I forgot. Hold on. Audience, is that fair? She wants us to say that name. Just show us where it's being used. Show us in a, in a church, in a community. Show it to us in history. Show us anywhere. Don't keep giving us the reasons why you use it. Is that fair? Put why for yes and for no. If it's fair, type Y. If it's not fair, just put no. That's true. It could be Andrea Diaz with a different name. Because remember, she attacked for years with the same thing. She didn't care about nothing we taught. She just had another name she wanted us to say. Okay, only one no, which was Nedabaya Rena, which I want you to tell us why it's not fair. I only got one no from another woman, so please tell us why it's not fair. What does allegedly being rude have to do with keeping the commandments of the Lord? Never get it twisted. Okay, it's unanimously yes. Only one woman said no, it's not fair, so please explain to us. That's right, Sean. And I've been down this road with people. Then when I explain my side of why we're not as passionate as they are, they get mad. Yes, there was only one no. And like I said, we already stand. You made your point, why you say it, why you feel. Just show us where the name that you want us to say is in circulation now. And everybody's aware of that name that you're saying. Okay, so we have no no's because Netabaya Rena said it was a mistake. So everyone unanimously type yes. So Naya, if you're going to type, let us know where you got the name from. Let us know your church. Let us know your source. Don't keep telling me I'm wrong and we're all wrong. Let us know your source. 
just you could uh, put a link, show us where we could find it online, and I'll switch the name tonight. That's right, Pamela Danis. She's turning into Destiny's Child. Say my name, say my name. <laughs> when everyone's around you, I'm just gonna hound you. You keep saying cry, say the name, say the name. <laughs> Leave Destiny's Child alone. <laughs> I know this nigga gonna say the name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See, I could be funny too, not just rude, Naya. I could be funny. And the reason why it was hard the first time, I thought it was a man. I looked at the name good. I saw it was a woman. So I said, you know what? I'm going to pull back. I thought it was some black Hebrew Israelite negra. Uh, wait, wait, wait. She put no one put it in my head. When you dig deeper and look at the etymology of the name, his name was Yehoshua, and in English it translates to Joshua. You're not wrong about that. That's true. There's no place on the earth where there's a community of people referring to Christ was a common name, and Yahshua was a common name. Okay? But you're missing what I said. The name that you told us to say, Naya Gonzalez, please show it to us. Tell us what church was state, where are you, that we can see it in real play where it's being said. We know that. We know everything you just said. Okay? We know about Yahshua and Yeshua. So I'm just asking you, just show me where it is, where it's being said, the name you said. <coughs> You've typed that multiple times already, so I'm being fair now because you said I was rude. I've never heard Hebrew until I've seen the Israelites in, from Brooklyn, from the tribe of Ephraim, and they say I speak Spanglish and how stupid it sounds when I don't know. I don't care if you guys use it. Just ask why you call him by his original name. We call him Jesus Christ because that's what our people are familiar with. Okay? And I've been doing this before you were able to look things up online, Naya. I've been doing this before Google. Okay, I've been doing this when the only search engine was a white man called Ask Jeeves. Okay, you're talking about in 1988, there was no such thing as Google. And there was never an argument. There was never literature online for you to go and search. Who makes a decision on whether we can register for Passover? The local schools. Uh, I don't get it. Seems to me like they harp on the name. Yes, most of the people harping on the name are not doing nothing that God says in the commandments. Ah, Tanera like my Destiny's Child remix. Ah. Uh, Yes, and, and I dealt with that when I was dealing with a Jehovah's wickedness girl. She said, his name is Jehovah. His name is Jehovah. And she would not, she wasn't doing nothing the Bible says, but she would enforce to you that you must say Jehovah God. No key. If you accept the false name, so then you might as well accept the false image. Look into, I don't know if you know, Naya, Everyone knows us for a black. Could you put the image of Christ that we follow, that we taught everybody to follow? Okay. The Europeans are worried about what we're doing with his name, not what they did. What happened to our image, please? 
Maybe now you don't know. Maybe she's new. Maybe this is her first night here. This is what's being circulated around the world through us. It shouldn't take that long to pull me up my black messiah who's going to set the world on fire. Do we have to just go to the website? Okay, this is what we teach. This is what we teach. Okay, now let's do, let's humor Naya. Take that down, put Google up, put Google up. Put Google, put, I want Google on my screen. Put it right up right now. Put Google up. On the big screen, I don't want to see me. Let's, let's, let's humor her. In that search engine, put black Jesus. Slide down. Put, let me see the images for a minute. Okay, they're referring to the one from the show. Keep going down. Keep going down. Put Black Christ. Slide down. Click over there. Click over there in the right. In the right. Guess who put this up, Naya? Okay, that's our image. Okay, Google has our image. So let me see if they have the first one that we did. Take that out. No, move that one out there. Before we switch to this one here, okay, you can find what we're talking about online. Slide back up, slide back up. The other way, the other way. Keep going, keep going. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can we click that for Naya? We did this one, what, 14 years ago? Like 2012, maybe 11? Okay, this was in circulation. Oh, this was in movies. They had this image in movies, but we got rid of this one because of the illustrator who put this together for us he was a loser and he's no longer with us but this was widely circulated by us naya so we're not confused okay the only other images are ones from tv and from television shows but our images are widely circulated throughout the earth slide back down please on that one there no no on the other side i see some more stuff you see how many came from the ones that we have even the new one even the T-shirt. Remember when we did that T-shirt, King of Kings? Who still got that T-shirt from like 15, 16 years ago? Now, let me go back to the chat. Y'all remember the name Naya said it was? Take it out. Go back to the chat. Naya, could you put the name that you said we're supposed to say? I forgot it. Or do y'all see it there? Anybody remembers the name Naya said we're supposed to say? Now, I wanted the spelling that she said. Does anybody see it? Keep searching. It was further up. It was further up. It was when she called me rude. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, keep going.
going, keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. Huh? Did Naya put it yet? Can you put the name for me? Naya, I forgot how you spell it. That's it. Okay. Could we write that name in Google? Yahoshua Hamashiach. Because maybe Naya's right. She went to Google. She said we can look up the etymology, everything. Put it in. Hit search. What? How come only white people come up? How come when we put the image that we put, it comes up? And she said to use Google. And everything sends you back to a white guy. How come nothing comes up with a black image of Christ? Or even the spelling that she gave? It's nothing but white people. From now on, we're going to do that. Whenever they give a new name, we're going to Google it and see what we can find up about it. Okay, we can, we can move on from there. Give me back my chat. She's complaining about what we're saying. We're pushing worldwide what our black messiah looks like, and it's being circulated. But when we Google the name she says, it's only white stuff that come up. I don't know, Naya. Back to the scriptures. Deacon, can you read Ecclesiastes 3, verse 21? Uh... Can you explain what the tribulation is that we have to go through? Christ explain it. There's going to be wars, famine, uh, sickness, disease. The world is going to be falling apart. Read it, please. The book of Sirach, chapter 3 and verse 21. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee. Neither search out, search the things that are above thy strength. Meaning some people reach for things that they will never attain. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful. What's commanded thee? The laws of God. Think thereupon with reverence. Read on. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Because there's certain things that are not going to be revealed to you. That's what we read in scriptures that the Messiah is going to give us his new name. If she still wants to hold on to that, that's making it clear where she stands. I have a doctrine. I want to push that. I want to teach that. I don't care what you show me. Uh, where we be? Yes, we haven't went over that name stuff in a minute. Maybe I will deal with it again. But it's usually one of them black Hebrew Israelites coming with that argument. Very rare. The only other woman who comes arguing is... Uh, what's her name again? Andrea Diaz. And she comes with a totally different name, so... Maybe the two of them can argue.
Hey, look, Katora is back tonight. She said the ignorance here is ridiculous. Is it me that's ignorant, Katora, or you said here as in the audience? I'm curious. If you're holy, separate yourself from those who claim to need to know the name to inherit the kingdom. Uh, they don't care about those scriptures y'all posting, so don't even waste your time. Naya, do you believe that the Israelites of the Bible are black? Because she put, so being black doesn't mean anything without holiness. Those are catchwords. Do you believe that the people of the Bible, the people of God, are people of color? Slide up. Okay. I don't think Naya's Esau. People are hung up on image when you also should call him by his original name to have more power. If you did, you would be taking, talking and cracking jokes and cussing the way you do. So there's a little bit of Christianity in you because now you say cussing. And this is what I mean. That's why I say you got to question them further. Usually the Christians say, don't say curse words, which they complain about. The English language is wrong, and we know that there are no curse words that you can find in Hebrew. So if you dig a little bit deeper, you're going to see there's a lot more confusion inside of her. Didn't answer my question, though. Did not answer my question. Am I required to eat a piece? Yeah, we're going to go to that now. I think we got most of the questions out of the way. Give me... Uh, so the first question we usually get is... How do we arrive at the date? Okay, the way that you find the date for Passover is by the cycle of the moon. Okay, by the cycle of the moon. There are 12 new moons, 12 new moons for the year. And the Lord told us this, give me... Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. How come y'all got me on here and I want to see the chat? What happened? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 1. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. The a month of Abib. Do you have your Bible dictionary to read to the people what the month of Abib is? Okay, this is from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Abib, an ear of corn, the pre, 
excellent name for the first month of the year. After the exile, the name was changed to Nissan. It fell about the time of our march in early April. So there's a seasonal time that it comes. The ending of March, early April, there is a new moon. And the first new moon of that year, because you cannot change the cycle of the moon. We don't come to the date by the white man's calendar. We arrive upon the date based on the cycle of the moon. So let's get that scripture before we pull away. Exodus chapter 13, verse 1. You can leave that up. Exodus 13, verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 13, and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, <clears throat> whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. Because our deliverance from Egypt was our Passover. The Most High sent death to the firstborn of the, of the Egyptians, and he let the death pass over the Israelites. So we were supposed to commemorate this day. Read on. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. That's why we tell you. In your house, you are not supposed to have anything with the leavening agent inside of it. The leaven is, is the ingredient used to make your bread rise, to make your cake rise. It's in cookies. It's in uh, many other foods. There's leavening, and then you have leavening agents. Okay, so I'm not going to get technical here. When the Lord said to remove the leaven from your house, it was the leaven used for baking, so it's customary when the Passover comes to check the ingredients of the food that you use and make sure you're not eating anything with leavening in it or anything that acts as a leavening agent because there's a whole bunch of different terminologies now. So people make it technical. So usually what you want to stay away from is breads, cakes, cookies, anything, uh, pastry, family, or if you do bake them, make sure there's no leaven in it. Anything to cause it to rise. Because why? Read it again. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out, of, out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Because we had to eat the bread in haste, so we baked it without the leaven. So that it will cook faster. Read on. This day came ye out in the month of Bib. He keeps reminding us that we came out in the month of Bib, which is year of corn, which is at springtime. Read on. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swore unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey that thou shalt keep this service in this month. So we always supposed to keep the Passover service in this month. There's some uh, groups that did it already. They did not do it according to the moon, the cycle of the moon. Go to uh, Exodus 23, verse 15. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, and verse 15. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. So you should bake enough bread to have a piece of unleavened Don't ask me how much to eat, because that stuff will make you fat. I always put on weight around this time of the year, because I am like the cookie monster from Sesame Street with the unleavened bread. All praises, I have my baking sister here who holds me down and she gives me them the way that I need them. But um, it says that you're supposed to eat unleavened bread, meaning bread with no leaven inside of it for seven days. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which starts at that Passover night. For seven days, you eat unleavened bread. Read it again. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. So... This is where it says it in scriptures. 
You could bake it every day, but some people bake enough to last for seven days. Okay, just bake it, cut it into seven pieces, and have a piece for the next seven days. Okay, keep it in the refrigerator. Read on. As I commanded thee. Because it's a law. It was a commandment. So with the Passover, the Passover meal is the lamb, the bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. The unleavened bread continues for seven days. Read on. In the time appointed of the month of Bib, for in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. None shall appear before me empty, meaning that you are supposed to be in accordance with what the law requires. Read on. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast shown in the field. Okay, that comes seven weeks afterwards, so we're not dealing with first fruits. Go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, in verse 18. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month of Bib. For in the month of Bib thou camest out from Egypt. All that openeth the matrix is mine. Okay, he's just repeating what he said in Exodus chapter 13. So he commands us more than one time to make sure for that week of the Passover, we're supposed to eat unleavened bread for seven days. So nobody asked me again about the unleavened bread, okay? And there should be no leaven in your house. It should have been gone. So start removing it from now. If you don't want to throw things in the garbage, start eating it from now. But in your house, it says to put the, the leaven is supposed to be out of your house. The leaven is symbolic to sin also when you read in the New Testament, Okay, so that's why we tell you discard it. All right, if you feel bad about throwing it away, give it to somebody, give it to your neighbor to eat whatever you have, but you should have stopped bringing leaven into your house from last week, depending on how big your house is, or if you got children or whatever. It's different for each household. Take that off the screen. Give me First Esther chapter one, verse seventeen. To someone, I said they don't know what the unleavened bread is, and the only way you'll know for sure there's no leaven in it is if you bake it yourself. So you have to learn how to bake unleavened bread. Yes. The book of Esther, chapter 1 and verse 17. For this deed of the queen shall come You're up. In first Esther in the Apocrypha, 1 verse 17. No. In, I just read it in the Apocrypha in the first book. On that first page, you shouldn't have to turn to nothing. As soon as you open the... Your apocrypha. What it says there on your in that book. What it says there. No, no, no. The name of the book. What it says. Esther, Esther right? Esther. Okay, read that. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. The book of First Esther's. 
Chapter 1 and verse 17. Watch this. Thus were the things because that... Because y'all ask about the bread. Read it, please. Thus were the things that belonged to the sacrifices of the Lord accomplished in that day, that they might hold the Passover. So this is what they did when they held the Passover. Read on. It offered sacrifices upon the altar of the Lord, according to the commandment of King Josiah. Read on. So the children of Israel, which were present, held the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Sweet Bread, seven days. So we know that the bread was sweet. It tastes like cake. If baked correctly, some people bake it without sugar, but in the scriptures it said that the bread was sweet. Uh, go to YouTube, bring up YouTube, take this, take this out. I want to see it here, and put IUIC unleavened bread. You got it? Put it. For those of you who are new. Can we get it on the screen and take the chat, take everything off? Okay. This is only a six-minute video. Turn it up so we can hear Sister today Diva. I will be showing you guys how to make a basic unleavened This so is very family, simple bread. Nice I'm Sister Diva from the Austin camp. And today I will be showing you guys how to make a basic unleavened bread recipe. So the ingredients that you will need is two thirds cup of uh, milk, four eggs, two cups of flour, two sticks of butter, which is equivalent to one cup of butter and two cups of sugar. And then also we have some vanilla flavoring, which I usually use one and a half tablespoon to one tablespoon of that. So I'm going to start with my sugar first. And then I add my butter. Also, um, the ingredients need to be room temperature. So your butter and your eggs and your milk should be at room temperature. And then you're just going to mix your sugar and your butter. And it's going to be like a wet sand texture is what it resembles to be. So it is going to be clumpy in the beginning. So now I'm gonna add the flour to the uh, butter and sugar mixture. And I usually do about half of the flour mixture, or the flour.
thing about this basic recipe is you can basically make any kind of unleavened bread out of this. You can add any ingredients into this. This is just the base of something that can be great. Okay, so that's it for this part. Um, we have the oven preheated on 350 degrees. And I think it's already heated to 350 degrees. So now we're going to take our grease pan, which is over here. And we're going to add the mixture into the pan and then put it in the oven. So now you're going to go ahead and pour your mixture into the pan. Your pan should be greased. You want to get all of it out of the bowl. And then give your pan a good shake. Make sure everything is even so that it can bake evenly. Now it's time to go in the oven. All right, so we just took our lemon bread out of the oven and this is the final product. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and shalom. Most high Christ bless. Right. All right, y'all. <laughs> Go to There's the page where where the video is. Pull out. Let me see the whole page. Zoom down a little. Click where it says more. Okay, all the instructions are there. Click view all. That's step by step, right? Where it said view all. Okay, everything in detail. So nobody should be asking me how to make the unleavened bread, how it looks, what to do. That was basic. And you could add cinnamon. You could add orange. I've seen orange-flavored cinnamon bread, strawberry-flavored, blueberry. You could add blueberries, whatever you want. Uh, pull out, put IUIC, how to make, right up top where it says daughter of Sarah, just put IUIC, how to make unleavened bread. Hit search. Here you got another one with Deborah, where she has what she call hers, put it up. You got butterscotch, you got, so nobody asked me how to make it.
sister Lise. And hi, my name is Lynn. And we're from the house of Officer Solomon in Oklahoma. And today we're going to be showing you how to make some butterscotch unleavened bread. It's super simple. Stay tuned. All right, so here's the recipe. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Here's all the ingredients that we're going to be using and um, making the bread with. So first, we're going to start by adding two sticks of butter and we're going to cream them until they look super creamy. So this is the consistency that you want, you know that it's done, um, and you can add in your eggs. So you're going to add in your eggs one at a time, and you're going to continue to beat them until um, you know you get the consistency that you're looking for. So now we're going to be adding in the um, cream cheese, we're going to add half a block, and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the butter, and just um, Use the mixer and really mix that in there till you get like a fluffy um, whipped cream type of texture. So, no one should be asking me how to make the 11 bread. It was so simple, a beautiful little child is doing it. We're going to get off that because every year I get people asking me how to make the 11 bread. Okay? Uh... Play, play it again, play some more, let me see something. So now we're going to be adding in flour, and I did this off camera, but um, I mixed in the flour, sugar, and brown sugar together. Got that all mixed in well together. Um, just do a little bit at a time, and um, you know, just fold that in there. Then you're going to take the mixer and mix all that in there. Make sure it's mixed really well together. And you should have this um, cake batter, not too thick, um, fluffy consistency with your batter. Um, as you should see, it's falling um, really smoothly, almost silk-like. So now, get your pan and you're going to dump your batter in there. You scrape off the sides to get see what the final product looks like. Pull it back a little bit. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! After the ice is oh on, you're gonna gosh. wait about another 10 to 15 minutes for it to harden on top. Once it's cooled down, you can cut a piece out and enjoy. Aww. So the bread is finally done. It turned out really, really well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this very simple way to make unleavened bread. Thanks for watching. Bye, Shalom. <laughs> shalom. <laughs> Okay, if that little child can do it, nobody should be asking me how to do it. We could take that off. Go back to the chat. So this is why it says you have to eat unleavened bread for seven days. From Monday at sundown, you should be eat, eating Monday the 8th at sundown. You should have enough. If you want to bake every day, then go ahead. But I think the best thing to do is bake a pan from that night before and just keep it in the fridge. Cut a slice every day for seven days. Me, I could eat that whole thing the same night. I'm just, I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> They'll be like, yo, who ate all the bread? It was me. <laughs> okay? Um, Because some people bake it. Without sugar, some people like for sandwiches because you can't eat regular bread. It's good to make some bread just with the same texture as bread and use it as sandwich bread. 
For those of you who want to, like, make a sandwich or whatever, you cannot eat regular bread because it has leaven in it. You cannot eat rolls or bagels or heroes. For a week, you can't eat that because those things have leaven. So the same way you made the recipe just without the sugar, there's people who make that bread and they toast it. They use it for whatever. If you can't go to week without bread or whatever, you can do that. Uh, so, give me Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. I live with my family members and they are Christian. How can I observe and keep the Passover? I can't throw. You don't. If you live in somebody's house, you do the best you can. You cannot tell people who don't believe what you believe to comply with these laws. You just do the best you can. If you're in somebody else's house or your child, leave the stuff alone. If you're with your mama and she don't believe or your papa and they don't believe or your sister or your auntie, leave the stuff alone. Yes, you can make it into a pita bread, uh, Marshawn. And that's a good idea. The 80 says he stays away from restaurants for the week because you don't know what they're going to put in the food. So just make your own food for that week to be safe. So, as I said before, the only way to ensure that you don't ingest any unle- any leaven is to make your food yourself for that week. Or if you do eat at a restaurant, you ask them. But don't start emailing me, ask me, does this have leaven in it? Does this have leaven? I'm not going to respond to you. I'm not going to respond. I already explained to you all, you're not supposed to eat anything with leaven for that whole week. And if you want to be safe, just don't eat out. And if you are, speak to the people that's pre- the restaurant that's preparing your food. Uh... Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Read that, please. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So the Passover, that new moon starts the beginning of the year. Okay? That's why the white man changed the beginning of the year to January. Okay? After their Greek god, Janus. But the beginning of the year... It's supposed to start the ending of March, beginning of April, when that new moon starts. The Bible tells us where the the year begins. That's why they play uh, April 1st is April Fool's Day, because the people feel that they got tricked when the white man switched it to January. And they would say, if you're still celebrating the new year in April, you are an April Fool's. Remember, they didn't have Google. They didn't have the Internet. They didn't have newspapers the way we had to make announcements. So white people just made changes, and the Israelites were still doing it in the year that God ordained. The year never started in January. White people did that. Okay, so the Bible tells us when the year begins. When that new moon comes for springtime in the month of Abid, ending of March, beginning of April. So that's how we came to our date. You, when you, you look at the new moon cycle, can we bring up the new moon cycle for a minute? What if matzos in the store is labeled good for Passover? White people made it? I'm not trusting it. I'm not listening to them. I don't know. I, they lie about it. I don't know if, if they're in compliance. I don't want, I want the calendar that shows it. (laughs) 
Yes, the new moon that shows the uh, when the new moon comes for the year. Can we bring up our calendar? I'm not sure what I'm looking at here. Yes. Go to March. Go back to this month. No, I'm sorry. Go back to March. So, if you look at the 25th of this month, that's when the new moon comes in at sundown. And the Bible says you are supposed to count 14 days because people ask us, why do you have this date? Why are the other camps using another date and not you? I don't know what the other camps are doing. This is how we arrived at our date. The cycle of the new moon. The next new moon is coming on the 25th, okay, which is Monday at sundown, this Monday at sundown. And the Bible says you are supposed to count 14 days after that new moon, so do it with your cursor. One, two, three, four. Uh, don't, don't shake it like that because I, I, I can't tell. Let's go back to 25 and let's count. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Three is, the, the second was, where we at? Where we was counting from? Okay. One. Right. Keep going. No. Count from there, since you have to keep splitting the calendars up, it'll be easier that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The Bible says you count 14 days from when that new moon arrives, which the new moon comes in March. That's why when we looked up, it said March, April is when the year begins. So you have to look when that new moon falls because it falls between March and April, and you count 14 days from that new moon, and that is how we arrived on the 8th. Because people ask us, where did we get our dates from? You follow the cycle of the moon. The next new moon for April is sundown on Tuesday, right there where the uh, cursor is, where the pointer is on the 23rd. The new moon we used to arrive at the 8th, it came on March. It's going to come this Monday. So you count 14 days, and that's how you find out when the Passover comes. You use the cycle of the moon, not the white man's calendar. Okay? You use the cycle of the moon. So please don't ask me why other camps, they did it before. I don't know what they use. Don't ask me why other camps come after I don't know what they're doing. I'm telling you what we're doing. If you're confused, then just go with the other camps and do what they're doing. Let's do it one more time so that everybody understands. Start with up top, March the 25th. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 is the 7th, and 14 is the 8th. The 14th day from when that new moon arrives will bring us to April 8th at sundown is when your Passover begins. Okay, so you're going to eat 11 bread started from the 8th day. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sunday should be your last night of unleavened bread. Okay? That should be your last night. And then that's it. So you're going to eat it for seven days from the eighth. So make sure you have enough unleavened bread. You only eat the Passover and the bitter herbs on the eighth. Nothing is supposed to remain over for the next day. If you don't understand, go back and watch this video. Don't keep making me repeat myself here. You guys have computers. This will be on YouTube. You could go back and you could watch it and hear me repeat the same thing. If someone asks you how we arrived at the date, we looked at the new moon that arrived for this season, which is March 25th, and you count 14 days from there, we'll bring you to April 8th. April 8th at sundown, when the sun goes down on the 8th, begins Passover, and you count seven days from sundown to eat unleavened bread. That's all there is to it. It's not complicated. It's not like you got to go buy a Christmas tree. You got to get the decorations. You got to get your Christmas list. Christmas is much more complicated than this. Much, much more complicated. You got to make a list. You got to check it twice. You got to find out who's naughty and nice. Not here. We just do what God says. Unleavened bread. Bitter herbs and lamb one night, and that's it. And rid the house, rid your house of anything with leaven. Look at all your foods. If anything has leaven in it, eat it or discard it. Because leaven is not supposed to be in your house for a week. Let's get off there now. F finish where we was reading at Exodus chapter 12. The book of Exodus, chapter 12, and verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. So the lamb, you're supposed to get it. Uh, can we put the calendar back up? For someone, if some of you who want to be in compliance, move me off there. Because people ask when to get the lamb. So 
The new moon comes March 25th. Count 10 days from March 25th. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wednesday, is that 10 there? Yes, to do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wednesday is the day you're supposed to buy the lamb. If you want to be in compliance with getting the lamb on the tenth day, which you just read, read it again. Twenty fifth at sundown is when it starts, so that's the first day. Do it again. It starts on the 25th at sundown. So if you count that you're touching 26. Yes, that's fine. That's when you get it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's the day that you should get the land if you want to be in compliance. If you don't get it that day, it's not the end of the world. Back then we were able to do that because we had lambs in our backyard. Our neighbor had. It was eat. We didn't have to go to the white man to get the lamb. I don't know how it is where you live. We could take that off and go back to the scripture. Because people asked when to get the lamb. This is what we were instructed. Read it please again. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 3. Speak ye unto all uh, the... Rebe, a city garden club, said, no disrespect, but did you get the new moon intro from Enoch? We don't read the book of Enoch. That's trash, and we don't read it. Right. Read that again, please. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their father. So he told you when to get the lamb on the tenth day. Read on. A lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb. Read a little bit faster. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto the house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats, and ye shall keep it unto the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they, and they shall take of the blood. So you see it said, get it on the tenth day, but you kill it on the fourteenth day. Read it again. And ye shall keep it unto the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they on shall, the evening of that day, when the sun goes down, read on. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper do upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. So people ask me, shall we do that now? There's no plague coming now for the plague to pass over our house. So we don't tell nobody, put the door, the blood on there. That's what the blood was for. So that when God plagued the firstborn of the Egyptians, it wouldn't come to your house. Okay? So don't ask me, should we do the same thing with the blood? Read on. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire. So people ask me how to cook it. You're, not, you're supposed to roast it with fire. You get a grill and you roast it with fire. You don't boil it. You don't put sazon on it. You don't put no paprika, no sofrito, cilantro, none of that stuff you don't put on there. Read it, please. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. The bitter herbs, I use kale. Okay, y'all figure out what other, don't ask me no other bitter herbs, all I know is kale. Read on. Eat not of it raw, 
nor sodden at all. Sodden means boiling it. You don't boil it. You roast it with fire to cook it. The Bible says how to prepare it. Roast it with fire. Read on. But roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. <clears throat> and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. So don't ask me if to keep any till the next day. What did Moses tell him? And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. What did Moses tell him? And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. You can eat lamb sandwiches with it. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. You can save it to make a lamb stew. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. You can put some lamb over rice like the gyro place with the Arabs. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. So don't ask me about the leftovers. If y'all type that, I'm going to tell you go back and watch the video. I was very clear. I'm doing this so that a baby can understand. Don't ask me about the leftovers. I'm going to tell you to go back and watch the video. You cannot use it for a gyro later on. You cannot make lamb stew. You cannot make lamb sandwiches. It said what? Read it one more time. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Nothing is to remain over to the morning. So after you finish the meal, throw out the leftovers before the sun comes up. Read on. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Discard it. Just throw it in the garbage. Read on. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hands. And ye shall eat it in haste. Because they were going to have to flee after God kills the firstborn of the Egyptian. They were going to have to leave in a hurry. Read on. It is the Lord's Passover. This is the Lord's Passover. So we're going to stop there and we're going to see who didn't understand anything before we read on. What was the question? I don't have a grill. Can I use my oven? Do the best that you can. But it says to roast it with fire. Uh, I already explained to you the unleavened bread. I explained to you what the bitter herb was. I explained how to cook it. I explained when to get the lamb, so I want to see now. I still don't get why eggs aren't considered a leavening. Eggs are not leaven. It's not, and the Bible didn't say anything about leavening agents. Leaven is specific. The eggs may give it uh, texture, but it's not leaven. It don't cause it to rise. Uh, I already explained the blood on the doorpost. It was because death was coming through. That's not happening now. There's no need to do it. No seasoning. Uh, you can only put salt on it. Uh, let me get that real quick. No pepper. You can only put salt. Use them up from now, Fino, and whatever you have, give it away. You are supposed to start discarding that stuff at least a month in advance, so you don't have to worry about what am I going to do with this. You can't discard the unleavened bread because they said to eat it for seven days. So how do you throw it away if the instructions were to eat it for seven days, Cass R. M. Rika, M. Deed, and you didn't miss a lot because all you got to do is press rewind. When the video's over, it's not going nowhere. Just go back and rewind it. You miss nothing. How much lamb is needed? How much you're going to eat? Uh... Why is not eating leavened bread for a week a law? I don't know what you mean. It's said to eat it for seven days. Uh, 
It didn't say anything about rice, Roshanda Martinez. It was very specific what you did for the Passover. Unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and the lamb. Can I be accepted at Israel if my mother is white and my father is black? It goes by what your father is, not your mother. The Israelites were not dealing with gluten back then, so I don't know what you're talking about. I can only tell you what the scriptures say. Leviticus 2.13 is where you shows you could put salt on it. Read it, please. The book of Leviticus, chapter 2 and verse 13. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. So this is the proof that you could put salt on there. Only salt. Don't ask me about pepper. Don't ask me about paprika, sofrito, adobo. Don't ask me about none of those O's. It says, read it one more time, Leviticus Chapter 2, verse 13. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Read on. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. So you do put salt. It's a law to put salt on it. Uh, Deacon, the questions are going to get wild. No, they're not, because uh, anything from now on, I'm going to tell them, wait till the video stops and rewind it. I know I covered everything. Uh, so there's only a few other things I didn't cover, which I'm going to go over. I'm just letting y'all ask the questions. I want to keep the Passover. My wicked boss doesn't even let me take off the Sabbath. You can still do it. Brandon, go to our website, israelunite.org, israelunite.org, and call the number for Ohio. They can assist you. And the website is on the top, right there, where it says IUIC Friday Night Raw, israelunite.org. Slide down a little bit. I missed a question. Oh, uh, what do you do when the Passover comes? If we was prepping before Passover with leavening things, you use it up before Passover comes because it's not supposed to be in your house. Do we ask, do we throw away? Uh, whatever you use to clean your house, or it's, it's not talking about that, okay? It's only the stuff that you put in food, not cleaning products for your house. Don't start reading cleaning products. Can you put those cleaning products inside your food you eat? If the answer is no, then, throw it, then leave it alone. Uh, how do you let a camp know they're breaking laws that's convenient for them? Tell them. I also want to join the school and put in work for the Lord, but I have to wait still until I get accepted to the school. Do you, do you never back? Slide that down. Uh, never back to me with the starter pack. I'm sorry, Greg. Just send it to me now. Send me an email, a reminder email. Can you eat other things the week? Yes. After that, you can eat whatever you want. Just for that night, that is the meal. And we're telling you that because some people put, some people eat pork that night. You have a camp that believes you can eat pork. Uh, and they have a funny name for Christ also. Just like the way Nyla was. They got an exclusive name and they eat pork. So that's why I don't entertain those people. Uh, slide down, slide down. A little bit.
Slide up. Okay, I went too high up. I lost what I was looking for. What do we eat the rest of the week of Passover? Whatever you want, as long as it doesn't have leaven in, in it. Take Felicia Dodson and push her up. I want everything under her. Is that it or do we go too far up? Can unleavened bread be fried or does it have to be baked? It's, it says to bake it, so I never heard of fried unleavened bread. That night, stay focused, that's your meal. Okay? Whatever you eat in the daytime, I don't know, eat whatever you regularly eat. But that night, that's what you consume for Passover. Ah. Uh, when it comes to Passover, what days can you work and not? The first day and the last, try and get those days off from your job. The first and the last day. Their leader call himself King David. Yes, the Israelite group that got a special name for Christ like Naya, they eat pork and they call their leader King David. Why is pork so bad for us? Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7, for big bro squad. The, the book of Leviticus chapter 11, and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He what it means to chew not the cud? It doesn't have the digestive system to break down the toxins inside whatever it eats. Read on. He is unclean unto you. God said that animal is unclean because of the way it breaks down food and toxins. Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. Read on. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. So he told you why you're not supposed to eat it. Okay? Stay away from the puelco, man. No, uh, chuletas. <laughs> uh, yep. Take Isaac the Jew, and right there, you should hit the gym. You look strong also, 20 years strong. I ain't got time for the gym no more, man. I, I'm going to try and get it in. Uh, oh, where are we at? Do we discard dog, cat food, if it has leaven in it? Can you eat that? I mean, there shouldn't be no leaven in your house, but um, just check it. Side down. Side down. You want too high up. Side down a little bit more. Uh, can we be friends with Esau? Yeah, I got friends at my job. I don't be at my job saying, don't talk to me. Okay, I'm not some racist uh, cult or leader at my job. Who said you can't be friends with them? I don't understand. When you go to work, are you mean to all the white people around you? Where's that in the Bible? So I don't know. Maybe you're talking about them black Hebrew Israelite groups. We don't never tell anybody to mistreat any Edomites. Uh 
Now I'm neglecting Facebook for a minute. Slide down. Down. Okay, we got that, got that, go up, go up. I got all those there. Okay. Christina, you don't sleep, bro. I'll be seeing her in Clubhouse all night. Now she, she's a devout follower. Some of y'all faces, I'm getting used to them. Cause you 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 know those women that change their picture all the time. You can't keep up with them. You get used to those sisters that just keep that one picture. Uh, where's the best place? Go to your butcher, your local butcher. That's it for all those questions there. Do kids need to miss school as well? If you could get the day off, get it off. Uh, Empress Israel. Yes, we have it on our calendar. Just go there. You'll see where it starts and ends. We showed it in the video, so just rewind it back. We showed you when it starts and ends. They both cause it to rise, so make sure there's no yeast or leaven inside of it. The school affect high holy days. Should we keep our children home? It's only the first and the last day. So see if you can get those two days off. Uh, it came, and, and you got to understand, that wasn't an issue when this was implemented. The kids weren't going to public school, so you got to use wisdom. I cannot tell everybody what to do in their own house. If your kid already got a whole bunch of absences and there's a letter coming home you're going to fail, you don't take the whole week off and then say, I told you to. That is just stupidity, and people do that. The kid already got bad absence or latenesses, then they go, oh, the Passover came. Deacon Asaph said, no, don't pull that shit with me. Don't pull that. If your kid has poor attendance, you see if you can get that first day and that last day off. But don't pull your kid out of school the whole week. Then he gets left back or suspended or whatever happens with uh, the truancy school system comes to the house. Then you're saying what I said. Don't put my name in that. I will embarrass you. Uh came to me is PTO still working on the Sabbath I figured not to ask for PTO just take the day off with no pay if I get the day off but I'm being paid is that still working if you're not there you're not working you're only working when you're at your place of employment not whether they're sending you money how could you be working if you're home if I'm I'm lost now. I'm lost. I know I was reading something that says if I'm come down a little bit. If I'm unable to congregate because I'm put out of the body, am I adding sin to sin for not congregating on the high holy days? I keep them at home. Yes, do them in your house. Uh, yeah, I'm going to check it, Greg. My brother, my wife brother has Esau girlfriend that I'm supposed to meet. Oh. Uh, Do the people at your job know who you are in the congregation? Yep. Slide down. Mm. 
World War Three. Why you put especially Aspen Love from Clubhouse? Tom Deacon does a Passover, and as I said, Empress, we went over it. Just rewind. I don't want to keep repeating the same thing over and over. We showed the calendar. We counted the days. And I want you, brothers and sisters, to get used to doing this on your own because maybe next year I'm not here. Maybe I'm – you shouldn't be like, well, show it to us again. You should save the video. You should go over it, and you should take notes. At any time, YouTube could kick us off. You won't hear from us. You won't see us, which is what we've been warning you guys about. Right now we're spoon-feeding you. Okay, so you guys have the video. I explained everything. Just go back and watch it. And you got the, say it in the mic. Uh, slide down a little bit from El Sayira Ashkuwa Ashkueto. Did Clubhouse get shut down last night? No, they ended it early because nobody was coming up asking questions. So we're not going to drag it. If nobody wants to come up, we're just going to end it. Deacon, I heard you sing boom, bye, bye, and up to boy, Ed. So I looked it up, and I really liked it. Yes, that guy was banned after he did that show, did that song. They would not let him perform no more in the U.S., uh, what's that? Nope, all you're eating is the meat of it, Lati. Slide down. Yes, Rashonda, you visit the school, that's how we provide them. I'm new, just learning about a lot of stuff in the Bible. I need some guidance on different ceremony that we to keep. Any of you that's new? You email me with the email that's on here, and I'll send you the study guide. You are nothing to Yah but a flock destroyer. The crazy thing is, if that's the case, why are you here at 424 a.m.? Okay, you're here with me. You're supposed to, you got all the answers, but you're watching me. Come on, man. You can't, only black people do stuff like this. I don't go to the Ku Klux Klan rally meeting and sing, you don't like the blacks. Come on, man. Sit your black ass down. <laughs> go sit your ass down. It's 424 a.m. And you watching here diligently and attentively to say, I don't like you. You're a poopy pants. Sit your ass down, man. <laughs> And then if you ask him, where do we go so that we, we don't get destroyed, he got zero answers. Sit your ass down. Uh, lamb is the only thing we can cook on. No, I didn't say that. Okay? Remember, it's at sundown. I did not tell you what to eat for breakfast. I didn't tell you what to eat for lunch. Your dinner should be lamb. Okay, when that day comes in on the eighth, eat whatever you want. But when the Passover preparation comes, that's what you eat. Uh. Slide up, slide up from Lizette. I'm lost.
Every year you give excellent classes on Passover. All praises, Tobias. Is there more detailed list of ingredients you can't use? I just told you what you can't use. Eleven. Just check your foods and make sure it has no leaven in it or yeast. Aspen is a catfish that's not her in the picture. She steals that woman's picture. How you know that, Lenate? I reject this group for they rejected me. I am living God, Alpha and Omega. If you were, you would not be here at 424 a.m. You are a loser. <laughs> Don't come here to tell me you reject me. The way that you reject me is by not being here and not typing. <laughs> All you're going to do is get yourself embarrassed. <laughs> I reject you, but I'm here at 430 at night watching you. Can you say loser? Would it be a sin to eat the products with leaven that stayed in the house due to them being a family member's? If it's not your stuff, don't touch it. You know what the law says? Your family that's not in the truth, they don't know. You know what the law says. You are following. You are in compliance. You are told what the Bible says. You follow it. Uh, when I go to my job, because I got to work, there's leaven there. There's, I can't tell them to throw everything out at work. Okay? So, you're not, you're not being realistic here. Damn, y'all laughing real hard body at this person who's the Alpha and the Omega. <laughs> You are not who you say you are if you're here telling me you don't like me. Like a little first grade, you're a poopy pants. I don't like you. If we kick the roach out, a new person pop up. We kick the roach out, a flea pops up. You're a flea. Ah. <laughs> uh. Now he used the Pee Wee Herbin. I know I am, but what are you? <laughs> oh, gosh, you people are funny. Takes one to know one. <laughs> uh, is there any way you can post up your favorite 11 bread? Slide that down. Ingredients so I can try it out. I really like something good from an elder with good Benji. Well, actually... I just follow what the sisters make, and um, those sisters there, they're certified. I, I don't know what's, I, I've, I've never made it, so I can't tell you. I just go by, they make it for me, so, you know. Uh, can I be like New Year, New Me when the new moon comes? I wouldn't do that. That's like what the Caucasians do. It should be a new you every day. Paul said I die daily. Uh, slide up. And go to the website. We got do's and don'ts there. I -U -I, uh, IsraelUnite.org. There's a do's and don'ts list there. Right up top. Slide down. That's why you, you got grown men and little kids' body. Why would you come here to type, I don't like you? What do you think my response is going to be? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, someone posted Aspen's IG link in the chat, and she's a 
covered Edom. She's dark skinned and she's married to a white pastor and has two Edom sons. I witness her page. I didn't see that. He can, how do you stay fervent in the truth for so many years? It's either this or choose death and be with Satan. There's no other option. So I don't know how, what you guys' knowledge are of the truth. If you walk away from the truth, you are now partners with Satan for life, for eternity. And I don't want that. Uh, are you only consuming 11 bread on those days or are you eating other non the only bread that you should have is the unleavened. You can eat whatever you want, but there should be no other bread going in your mouth for seven days but unleavened bread. I'm sick of you devils. Then why are you here, Henry? And all you have to do is click one button and go to sleep, Henry. Bye, Henry. You don't have to type. You've already made it clear you don't like us. Goodbye. We don't need to hear your innermost, deepest thoughts like a woman. <laughs> okay, go to sleep, Henry. <laughs> uh, what actually is leaven and what items in the house? Anything for cooking that causes the bread to rise. It makes it fluffy. Are you still welcome to a school if you don't have fringes yet? We never told people don't come if you don't have your fringes. We've never said that, so I'm not sure where you got that from. It's like Men in Black when Will Smith stepped on the roach. That's right. Now you know my name. Goodbye, Henry. Please don't type no more. You don't like us. You've made it clear. Please leave. The more you study, the more you wonder and discover addiction. Uh, now, he, now he says, I'm up now. <laughs> I can't sleep, nigga. <laughs> so I'm going to bother you. <laughs> You niggas is crazy. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, now, what if you can't do the Passover? For circumstances, whatever, you're sick or whatever. Uh, give me Numbers chapter 9, verse 1, because nobody asked that. I was waiting to hear, what if you can't do it? What if you, something happened, there's a death or something, or you can't do it? Is it okay to allow my son to drive me around to do errands if he left the truth? That's between you and him, sis. If that's the only way you could get around, aren't you going to pay a strange Uber driver or somebody else? If that's what you need? Then do it. I can't tell you not to do that. Just don't make him cause you to sin. Or don't make him cause you to leave the truth. Uh, someone at the school told me that a thermos is a parents of sin. Let them give you the scripture. Okay? It's no different from Tupperware or tying yourself in something. It's just a container to keep your, your food uh, warm or so that it can stay hot longer. But I don't care what they told you. If it, if it appears to be sin, that's in their mind. You need to show me what scripture says that. Uh, Deacon lives rent-free in these devils head. Yes. Okay. I can move anywhere I want at any time. I don't even have to sign out a lease agreement. Nothing. They tell me I don't have to fill out no paperwork. They just let me right in. Uh. I swear it's a breath of fresh air every time I hear Deacon Asaph speak, real man talk. Yo, all praises, all praises. What do you do if your child doesn't want to follow the truth if underage? Wait till they're 18 and tell them they got to go. Uh, I think the questions have been good for clarity. Are people, let me say, I've learned on the, you know, came me to our living room. Me too, I live rent free. Uh, Katora, keep it nice and quiet. Please just remain that way for the night. After the way she cursed me out on Clubhouse, I ne no woman ever talked so disgusting on Clubhouse. I never, in all the attacks that I've had, she is the worst. She goes down on record as the worst. 
And then she said, no man can shut me up, only God. She marked herself. Okay, we'll see. Those are the famous last words of a lot of women. Uh, when he stepped on a roach. Oh, she says she apologized. All praises, Katora. Uh, it's 8.36 a.m. in London. I'm blessed to be here. That's beautiful. Okay, you wake up to me. I'm, I feel honored. I feel honored. Uh, she just apologized, Nadiva. She said she was sorry. Uh, are you destined to meet everyone you've met will meet in this truth? It's up to the Most High God. Thank you, Deacon, for answering all my questions. Some of you are around people you shouldn't be around. That's what you should be worried about. Not the people you don't meet, the people that you're around that you know you should not be around. I don't worry about my future encounters. I worry about the people who should not be in my immediate circle. Uh, Gabriella Amor... On uh, Facebook, I love that response. Show me the scripture. It irks me to see y'all being disrespected. I had to fall back off Clubhouse because of it. You know what? If Christ Christ said that we were going to drink of the same cup, so it don't bother me. I, I'll be feeling good when they come for me. Y'all don't know. It, it, I, it, it, they're expecting me to fall apart. But if they were not coming for me, I wouldn't be that dude. Okay? This is the one time where I will refer to myself as nigger. If they was not coming for me, I would not be that nigger. <laughs> so I feel honored when they come for me. When they're not coming for me, I feel like I am not that nigger. So that's the only time I could use that in conjunction with me. I am that nigger when you put your hand on that trigger. Ah. Uh... See, Henry going to keep talking the whole night. Now I need to be humble. Okay? What bothers them is they can never get the response they want from me. Never, ever. Ah, uh, Norma, you're going to make me cry. She said, how can you not love the deacon? You're going to make me cry. Uh, and look, you know what's the crazy thing is? I'm just trying to win the souls over, okay? But Satan wants you to lose your temper and chase them away. So I, I just, that was the old me. Uh, Isaac the Jew said he talks like a slave master. Says you need to be. That's how white people are. Take that bass out of your voice, boy. Boy. I'm talking to you, boy. Uh, I was doing my four chapters a day and I was confused on Genesis 32 32. What does that say? Uh. You were the one that introduced me to the truth, and it was the best decision I ever made. All praises, Nadiva. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let's get this real quick. I didn't get to go in. If you cannot keep the Passover. Uh, let's just get that real quick. Let me see what it is. Deacon, I can't wait to see you when you ever come to Mobile, Alabama. You know when I was down there for the... Feast of Tabernacles. I had a bad experience in Alabama. If those rest, I had to hold my pee the whole trip. After I went into one spot and I could feel them, they didn't say nothing to me. But the spirit I got from them is, what power, nigger? What are you doing inside this damn store? 
They was looking at me with just direct, just hatred from their eyes. And then somebody else came and told me, yo, don't go to that store over there. You just felt it. And then when I saw them cotton fields, it sent chills like I just was trembling. It was just horrible. I mean, it was beautiful being with my people there, but that was a horrible for me to just see. It was just crazy. It was a crazy, I, I felt uncomfortable there. So my hat goes off to my brothers and sisters that are there. I'm going to come see y'all again. Oh. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 32. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrink. Only because it was a custom at that time because of when, uh, read the verse before. Verse 31, and as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his hot, his thigh. The sinew is what holds the, the limbs together. Read on. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrink. Be talking about after the encounter with the wrestling with the angel. It was something at that time where there was a custom based on what they heard about the story. Uh, and also I found when I was in Alabama that the Ku Klux Klan's headquarters was only 30 minutes away from where we were. Yes, they were like 30 minutes away. Uh, yes, that was a custom after... They heard about the encounter of Jacob wrestling with the angel. Okay, and his thigh came out of joint. Uh, when traveling, only stop at truck stops or Busey's. I found that out the hard way. You understand? I asked them questions and they didn't answer me. They made it crystal clear. Nigga, what you doing here? And then everybody started saying the same thing. Everybody was like, where did you go to? People were telling me, don't go in none of them stores. It was beautiful for my Israelite family when I was around them. Are you going to do a clubhouse on Candace Owens? If we could go over that topic... We could definitely do it. Uh, you want that in numbers, Deacon? Hold on. Yes. We're going to go over now. If you cannot be in compliance with April 8th for the Passover. It was just regular stores that we stopped in. It wasn't truck stops like... Uh, the sister just said, we just assumed that it was the same thing like when you're driving through New Jersey and Philly and everything else. When you got down there, you felt that you were not welcome. Uh, Read it, please. It's Numbers chapter 9, verse 1. This is for if you cannot do the Passover on April 8th. The book of Numbers chapter 9 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. In the first month of the second year after they were, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the 14th day of this month at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, at even in the wilderness of Sinai, 
According to all that the Lord had commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. Verse 6. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. So they had to deal with the dead. So they weren't allowed to keep the Passover that day because of the restrictions on coming to the place of worship, which we don't have now. Read on. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we keep kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. So we cannot keep the Passover, Moses. What do we do? Read on. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning now, you. Now, you know what I like about this? Moses didn't have all the answers. He had to say, let me go and talk to God. It's the same thing with us. Sometimes we don't have all the answers. Moses said, wait right here. I'm going to go talk to God, and I'm going to holler at you. Just be patient. Read on. Verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your poster posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey afar off, Yet, Meaning you're traveling, so you can do it. Read on. Afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. You still got to keep the Passover. Read on. The 14th day of the second month at even, they shall keep it. And so what did it say to do it? The 14th day of the second month. Of the next month is when you do it. So let's go to the calendar for a minute. So I'm going to give you the date for if you can't do it, April 8th, when you're supposed to do it. He's pulling the calendar up, so just be patient with him. Yes, and the only day you need off is the first and the last day. You don't need the whole week off, but if you got the time, okay, just do it. No, I want April. Okay? So we count 14 days from the new month in April. Because this is when the new moon cycle that denotes, the, if we don't use a calendar, we use the cycle of the moon. Okay? So it's the 23rd on April. We're going to count 14 days. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's Monday the 6th of May. If you cannot do it April 8th, you're going to do it Monday the 6th of May. Because why? Read the scripture again. Verse 11. The 14th day of the second month. Of which month? The second month. The month after the first, which was April. So you're going to go to May. Read on. At even, they shall keep it. So sundown, May the 6th, if you can't do it April the 8th, is when you're going to do the Passover. Okay? When Moses went and he spoke to God, God told him to do it the next month. 14 days after the next month begins is when you're going to do everything that we told you to do at the Passover. So that's for you people who cannot do it on the 8th. Either you're traveling, whatever reasons, that you doesn't accommodate you. It doesn't mean you skip the Passover. The next month of May, sundown the 6th, is when you do the Passover. So count from the 6th, that's 1. 
the run the six Monday Monday the six go back on the six no stay where you are May the six one two three four five six seven and it ends Sunday night at sundown that's seven days from the six to the twelfth as year passed over if you can't do it on April the eighth. From the 6th at sundown to the 12th at sundown Sunday of the next month of May. May the 6th at sundown for seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It ends on the 12th of May. I'm not going to keep repeating this. You have the video. I showed you everything right there in front of your face. And this is the reason why we have May here which is the second month, if you cannot keep the Passover April 8th at sundown, you do it May the 6th at sundown, Monday, and it ends on Sunday the 12th at sundown. You can take that off. Ah. Uh. Slide up a little bit. Slide down. Slide down. Move the other one to the bottom. When Job's wife said, curse God and die, what exactly did she mean by curse him? To denounce him. He still kept his integrity and his beliefs, so she said, denounce him and just let him kill you. Job 325. It's the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. That's it. Yes, sir. Read 24. Verse 24. For my sign, excuse me, for my sign cometh before I eat, 
and my roaring are poured out like the waters. Verse 25. For the thing which I great excuse me, for the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. Meaning God not having his best interests, allowing Satan to attack you, you should be greatly feared of that. That's what that's what happened in the beginning of the uh Job encounter with the devil. God gave Satan a green light to disrupt his life. And you should greatly fear that. Read it again. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. And that was it, that the Lord allowed Satan to disrupt his house. And two verses above that, Deacon, there are two questions. How do Israel come up with their new names? Look in the Bible and research the name and see if it matches your spirit. I was reading my four chapters today, and I have a question about Solomon's prayer for the heathen prayer to be answered if they come to the temple, if I understood correctly. He's talking about the Israelites that will lose their way, just like us. When you calling yourself American, African, you are heathens. He's talking about the Israelites who would lose their way. Uh, Solomon was a prophet. Here is God. Henry Hodge said this was an accident, me coming to this page. So now correct the accident and just click out. Don't type no more. That's it. Just correct the accident. Sorry. We're sorry you encountered us. Just click and go someplace. Uh, is Mark 10, 11 applies if an Israelite is married to a non-Israelite? Deacon, have you ever tried Passover grilled lamb with the KO wrap and unleavened tortilla wrap? You sound like you're trying to make somebody fat. Come on, man. Uh, that's right. No, accident, but still here. What was the scripture I said to read? Mark chapter 10, verse 11, sir. Read it. Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. Verse 12. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. Oh, I think that's self-explanatory. I'm not sure what you didn't understand with that. Hey, can you just delete this guy now, this Henry? Goodbye, Henry. We got to delete you. Yes, just, just delete him from here. He won't just stop typing. Just delete him. Goodbye. Go to sleep now. Drink some milk. All right, stop drinking the liquor you've been drinking. Goodbye, Henry. I don't understand. They hate me, but they just keep typing over and over. Uh, let's go back to the calendar again, because wise virgin said, I think you counted the start of the new moon as the first day on the second month, but counted the end. Yes, that's what we're, we're going to do for the second keeping, which is April. Okay, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in bigger, I can't see. Okay, the new moon comes in on the 23rd at sundown. It says it right there. That's where we started, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're supposed to count 14 days from that, and let's see if we were correct. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The fourth May, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's what I said. Monday, 
And the 6th of May is when you do the Passover for the next month. Is that not what I said? And then I said we count seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it ends on the 12th. Okay, Monday, May 6th at sundown is when it starts. Sunday, May 12th is when it ends. So I'm not sure what you're talking about, wise virgin. Yes, we could take it off. I did it over again. So could you tell me where we was wrong, wise virgin? Because you got wise in the front of your name. So that's why I was like, whoa, 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 wait. She's not only a virgin, she's wise. So we done effed up now. So please show me what we was wrong, wise virgin. If someone asks, what is your religion? What do you say? I have no religion. We're not religious people. We follow what the Bible says. Religion is man-made. Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Jehovah's Witness, God didn't say to do no religion. We follow what the Bible say. Can you do the Passover at home because I can't attend the school because I have to work? Yes. Just because you don't, it, there's nowhere said when it was kept that people came to a school. You did it in your home. It's just a luxury we have now. You do it in your home. They all didn't come together on the school. It explained to you that you do it with your neighbor if you don't have enough lamb or, you know, you do it at home. You don't have to tell the school why they stay at home. That's none of their business. So look, it's 5.05 a.m. School makes it their business here in Tennessee and asks my kids, well, you should be instructing your kids 
know what to tell them. No school needs to know your religious beliefs. Okay, why you didn't come to school today? I don't have to tell them because I'm keeping the Passover. They don't know nothing about that. My mom said to stay home, whatever reason you tell them. It's none of their business. Is it a sin to cover your fringes or keep yourself low prowl? It depends where you are. I, I can't wear fringes at my job. I have to wear a suit. I can't have them out, so I, I can't tell. I don't know what your reasoning is for that. Slide down for a minute. The first day and the last day is Sabbath, so if you could get the first and last day off, do it. I don't much like women correcting me, so it's sad when a woman, I can't even finish this comment. Well, I don't have a woman problem with a woman correcting me if I'm doing something wrong. That's not biblical. Okay? That's why the scriptures say, give not your mind over to a light woman. If you're in sin and you've trained your woman, don't correct me. You're going to destroy yourself. You want a woman that's strong in the scriptures. That's why I told the other sister, don't let your husband tell you not to go and learn. That's the dumbest thing. So you're setting yourself up for failure if you don't have a wise woman that when you make uh, Moses, when he, his, he didn't have his child circumcised, uh, his wife went and circumcised the child. Okay, that was a wise woman. When Abraham and Sarah, when she said, no, you putting, God told uh, Abraham to listen to his wife. Okay, so what you're saying is not biblical. Give me Exodus chapter 4, verse 21. The book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all Stop those... Chapter 24. Verse 24. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Judgment was coming to his house. Read on. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son. Because her son wasn't circumcised. So she did it. Read on. And cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let, sorry. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art. Because of the circumcision. The wife had to go and circumcise the child. Uh, with Abigail and Nabal, the wife had to go and speak to David. There's numerous instances of wise women correcting errors. So for you to say you don't want a woman to correct you, that's dangerous. There's times when we can make a mistake. Side down all the way to the bottom. That's cultish. What's cultish? Oh. Uh. Yes, I would never just want a yes woman around me because that's like the guy that he's in traffic. 
He's making the wrong turn, and the wife is like, look, honey, this is the exit. Like, Don't correct me. You go to the wrong area, and then you're way out of your way or you're late because you train your wife not to correct you. You can make mistakes. That's odd. And I did speak on the, what did I say about the door? The blood on the doorpost, because Genty Bora Colt said, I didn't hear you speak on the blood on the doorpost. What did I say about the blood on the doorpost? Question on, I have a question on blood transfusion. My wife has sickle cell and needs one. We are scared and a little confused on what to do. Get it. You're not going to, don't, there's no uh, Bible verse that forbids that. Why are you scared? All praise is Matome. Uh... Yes, everybody saw I spoke on the blood on the doorpost, and I said that was to stop death from coming to the Israelites because the instructions were given to put the blood because death was going to come to the firstborn of the Egyptians. So to make it pass over your house, that's why you put the blood. So I said we don't have to do that now because God is not coming for our firstborn. Shalom, Donna. Now, if you want the ASPCA coming to your house or, or the police pulling up, go ahead and put it there. Okay? But don't say I told you to do it. I told you not to do it. But if you want some animal rights activists coming or the next door neighbor saying he got a gun and then you get shot it up, don't complain and say that I told you to do it. I told y'all do not do it. So that's why I'm repeating it here. I don't want some nut job doing it and then saying I said. I was very, very clear. Because I know you see blood on the doorpost. They call in the emergency service unit in New York. And your house is going to be surrounded. It. There's going to be helicopters over it. And you're going to come out with your hands up. Okay? <laughs> so if you want to do it, you do it. But when there's helicopters over your house with the police dogs, and they're telling you, come out with your hands up, walk backwards to me, sir, and you on the news, do not put IUIC's name, and don't have our shirt on, nothing. As a matter of fact, take your fringes off while they're arresting you. Because I know what y'all going to say. Y'all going to say, I told you, even though I said not to. Okay? What if I can't take off for work for the Passover? Um... Schedule, you could do it the next month. Why would you put blood on your doorpost? Some people do it, Norma. And I know if I'm not in the truth, and I see Tyrone Biggums next door to me, or Daquan putting blood, I'm calling, hello, 911. Yes, is this 911, Hello. Yes, this nigga next door to me, I don't know what the hell he doing. He must have just killed somebody. But he wiping graffiti on the door with somebody's blood, and y'all need to come right now. No, I'm not hanging up. I don't know what this nigga doing. I am not going to sleep. He will not be knocking on my... I'm not hanging up till the police get there if I'm not in the truth. Okay, Mr. Police, I'm going to wait right here for you. Okay, he got them long stringy things on his shirt with a border blue on it. And he just 
quietly just putting blood all over the door. I don't know if he just killed his mama, his daddy, and all his kids. But he ain't going to kill me next. I'm not going to sleep until you get here, Mr. Policeman. I will wait. Picture that. You're not in the truth, and you seeing somebody just wiping blood all over their door. You don't know where it came from. You don't know why he's doing so much of it. I don't want, he don't want to hear nothing about the Bible. And (laughs) you know how everybody is. They got a phone. So they're going to be going, world star, while you're getting beat. (laughs) You're trying to explain to the police officers you're doing the Passover celebration, and you got 19 guns pointed at your ass. You go ahead. You know how black people love drama. Ain't nobody just going to go in their house while you're putting door outside. They're going to be like, yo, he done killed a whole Lord Jesus. He done killed a whole family. Gathering together on the Sabbath at home and watching classes. Is that keeping the Sabbath? The scriptures say we're supposed to come together. If you choose to stay home and you don't have no logical reason other than you want to be by yourself, then you're not in compliance. Y'all heard Nadiva. She wrote it again. Please don't put blood on the doorposts. So don't come and use my name for nothing. Is buying scratch-off lottery tickets, betting? No, there's no sin in that. It's what you do with the money when you get it. It's a sin. If you hit that lottery and I don't see you here no more, then you're in sin. Because a lot of people say, oh, if I hit the lottery, Deacon, I'm going to send you this. I'm going to send you that. Then they hit, they be like, nigga, Deacon who? (laughs) Okay? Most people get money and leave the truth. Very rare do people do what they say. They get the money and they help the truth. I've never seen it. I've seen people come into money in this truth and they gone. We have one brother come into some money. I don't think it was lottery. I think it was lawsuit money. And he was at every sister's, buying every sister something. Trying to help her with all her bills. It's four people that gather and watch class. Why are they not at the class? Now that they got the money, they not you don't see them no more. You don't see their name, nothing. And oh, you just got to go to their social media and you see all the places they are on the Sabbath. So look, I got to let y'all go. If y'all forget anything, y'all ask me next week. I think we covered everything, how to cook it, when we arrived at the day. Uh, We went over everything. So y'all shouldn't have no issues. If anything, go back and rewind the video. Thank you for your support. 
Thank you for all you brothers and sisters that been on. Devout followers and listeners, thank y'all for the people who be on the clubhouse. I notice a lot of y'all on the clubhouse. Y'all be here also. And um, it's hard to just be so consistent with what we're doing. Okay, and be here every night listening. Sometimes it's repetitious. I'm saying the same thing over and over. And y'all come every night like it's new. Like Christina, I see her face almost all the time in Clubhouse and here. I recognize a lot of y'all faces. Um, Princess Esther, I see her all the time. You know, so I'm aware. I know y'all care, and that's why I'm here. Most high in Christ, bless. And Lizette also. Shalom. 